families. I can't speak for everyone here, but I'm fucking tired of this shit. They'd rather arrest every black person than arrest two people in blue. Police are afraid of my skin, but that says something. Police take off their power at the end of the day. They take off their badge, they take off their gun, and then they just become someone else. I don't take off my black! You can disregard we're getting a huge police right now. We got through to the female and uh screaming at us and then hung up off the
Caller's not receiving videos and pictures saying that he's at a house in the area of And so from 13th and Stark, they gathered at like well, six o'clock. It probably took about an hour to get everybody together over at 13th and Stark. And it was really incredible to see how well organized they were. They had snacks, drinks, um, any kind of supplies that you might need out on a march like this. Um, rags, earplugs, bottles of water. Um, a lot of that to give out to people for free. Um, and they rallied in there at uh, 13th and Stark possible. and talked about There's some of the rules of the night. The first rule, no violence. Uh, second rule, communication. Uh, make sure you listen to the leader so that it can remain organized. Um, and then they marched to the Burnside Bridge where they met the other group from downtown at the Burnside Bridge. And uh, you saw thousands of people lying on the bridge. Uh, face down, the hands behind their back, um, in honor of George Floyd. Uh, they did that for nine minutes, the number of minutes that uh, Mr. Floyd uh, was on the ground until he suffocated to death. So they, they marched from, after that, they marched to um, back down Birdside here to the Pioneer Courthouse Square. And I got to tell you, it was really peaceful. The energy was really, you know, really um, upbeat and everything was going well and then we had a car come through at 4th and Burnside, come through the crowd, uh, just plow through the crowd, plow through that intersection and nobody was hurt fortunately but we were, our, our crew was just like feet away and um, our guy Richie actually caught it, our, our photographer Richie actually caught it on camera. Is that thing cleared out? I okay, so they've gathered here in the square and they're listening to, been listening to uh, some of the leaders. You're an expert at integrating smart video today. solutions. You work hard. There are countless manufacturers. Hey, Winfield, can you use a tattoo for me? Okay, thank you. So we're going to go back. Um, we're going to go back over to this aid station. I want to talk to some of the people providing aid. So we've been telling you the last few nights about the caravan of cars that's been following the protesters just for like support. And um, in the first few nights, it was just like um, what seemed like just basically like emotional support, not really anything very practical, and um, as the night as the nights go on, they've gotten more organized, and now they're actually becoming like uh, first aid and food and water support. Hey, can we talk to you guys? Can we talk to you guys? Can we talk to you guys really fast? Um, we're with uh, Coin TV. Um, can we just talk to you guys about what you're doing? What's your name? I'm Jen Frisbee. Yeah. Okay. Talk to us about what you're doing. Your car is filled with all kinds of snacks and water. We're here to support black people, black and brown people. We're here to support them. Portland is here for black and brown people. All right, what are you doing? For protesters, we're making sure they can stay here as long as possible. So we need to feed them, give them water. Okay, so how did this group of uh, cars and aid and food and water kind of get organized? Can you tell us about that? There's no organization. It's just everyone coming out on their own Great. volition. Everyone wants to support our. Oh, uh, for the complaining on that 710 step on Belmont. How do you feel? Were you uh, here last night? Clear that out, John. I'll try to call back. Okay, so if you've been here all week. Okay, don't need people. Street. Hold on. Okay, so if you've been here all Oh, that's is that a that's a canister full of donuts? Oh my God, that's great. Okay, so you've been here since Friday. So, talk to me about 
the comparison from Friday to yesterday. I mean, yesterday it was just super peaceful. Can you just kind of like walk us through like your thoughts on that from the Friday to yesterday to today? I think Friday, like, change comes from riots. Unfortunately, you gotta have peaceful protests, riots, marches, all kinds of things. Today, I feel like it's more of a celebration. Last night, Burnside Bridge was occupied. It was just basically a dance party for everyone. We want to see by POC people having happy, safe spaces where we can protect them. Yeah, well, we're glad you're out here. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for talking to us. Bye, Jen. Bye. You know, I would love a donut, but I don't need one. I don't need all that sugar. Let's save it for everybody else. Thank you, though. So those are some of the people providing... Um, aid, food, and water in the cars, and like you heard her say, they're doing this. Their purpose is to do this so that these protesters can stay out here as long as they need, um, as long as they can provide them water and food. They think that they'll stay out here longer. So um, that, that caravan of cars has really grown over the last few nights, and this is definitely the biggest crowd we have seen. And um, since Friday, in the south, I mean, you can't really, uh, really estimate. Do you think you can estimate how many people are out here? I mean, it's, we've been able to kind of estimate the last few nights. Um, like last night, it was about 4,500, probably. Tonight, it's just, it's massive. What? It's a little bit bigger. And I think Portland Police actually said that last night's was 6,000. But it, it's bigger than that. It's, it's bigger than last night for sure. Um, yeah, so we just have people kind of scattered throughout uh, the square. Da the square itself is filled up, but the surrounding areas, people just kind of scattered, hanging out. Weather's nice. Um, we're just kind of waiting for instructions. What's next? Like last night at this time, uh, they marched. We're marching back to um, to 13th and Stark, I believe. So I'm just gonna see where it goes. We haven't seen Portland police. I'm not seeing them. Um, I need to check Twitter and see what they're saying. That's how they're communicating with the media is Twitter. I know earlier they were think, thanking these protesters uh, for the peaceful demonstration. You know, the days and the hours are blurring together. So, what were, were we, Richie, at 9 yesterday, what, what, where were we? I know, it's like blurring together. To the individuals that are sharing their voice and their experience. I thought we were on the, were we on Burnside? Sharing your voice and your experience. And it is difficult to get up. Okay, well, you can't see Richie, but I'm going to interview him. Hey, Richie is our, is our photographer, and I was telling you that he... Okay, where are they going? Okay, I think they're just kind of doing a little, they're getting a little, a little rowdy, a little, having a little fun. Okay, so Richie, I told you, was um, recording when that, when that car came through 4th and Burnside, just plowed through those, through those uh, protesters, and we were just feet from that. Richie, tell me what you were thinking in those moments. It was so sudden. I mean, honestly, I just turned around because I heard, you know, the car beeping. I thought he was just praising the protesters like everyone else. It's a family member but apparently, be at the corner here he just with a went right past us. I mean, we honestly almost we could have we could have been hit, and it's yeah, it was crazy. So um, hopefully they find that guy because yeah, that was that was not a uh, that was oh something happened. I'm sorry. Hold on. I don't know what that big bang was, but we are hearing that some of the protesters are moving towards the waterfront. But I'm going to tell you, I don't know if that is, if, I don't know that, it seems like there's a group here that does not belong to the peaceful group. I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of getting that vibe and I'm trying to, I need to confirm that, but that's the vibe I've been getting the last half hour and it's really starting uh, to seem like that in the last few moments and they're shooting flashbangs. Oh gosh. No.
Yeah, that's too bad. The, okay, so that's not the group. Those are not people affiliated with this group. Here, give me my alcohol. I hold my back. Like another group of protesters have been throwing fireworks at police and police have lost gas back. But that does not seem to be the protesters. Not the same. Who, who's, who's throwing the fireworks? Who's throwing the fireworks down there? Um, I didn't see any fireworks. I thought fireworks. The ones that you go off on the boat? I know who's doing it. I don't know these people down there shooting big ass fireworks. That's not a part of it. It's not part of a grip piece for protest. No, they don't say it all up for us. Everybody has to leave now. We're trying to get peaceful. I know, I'm sorry. We noticed that. We noticed that. We noticed that. We noticed that. Propaganda. Like I told you before, when I first met you the other night, I said this is propaganda. The police are lying. I've been down here. There's no criminal activity. No criminal activity. Right. It's been, I, listen, I, it seems like it's another group. That's the cop doing that. That's not us. That's the cop. I think it's other people not affiliated with your group throwing the fireworks. The other night I was down here. The cops are the ones lying. The cops are lying. I was down here before. They did the same thing. There's no curfew. So the cops you think are throwing the, the firecrackers? Doing this, yes. Did you see the videos with police officers around the world set, setting up bricks? They're, post, they're putting up bricks for people to grab. They're setting people up. The cops are doing this. Okay, we're gonna go down there and see what's going on. Be safe. We're good here, okay? We're just gonna stand here. Scott, our security guy says we're good here. This is really too bad. See, they have their hands up. This massive group of people right here has their hands up, walking backwards. What? Oh, wow. Is it? Okay, these people are... Thank you. Okay, so those people were just telling us that the police are shooting rubber bullets. Um, I have not confirmed that with my own eyes, but that is what we've been told by a couple of people. Um, and, again, the majority, the very mass majority of these people are, have been peaceful. And, you, like you just heard some of them tell us, it is um, a fringe group that seems to be throwing fireworks. Um, and they're upset that they have what they they're upset that they have said they're excuse me they're upset saying that it seems like um, these people are ruining the peaceful protest. Uh, caller is in Albany. She said I got a text from her daughter, 35 year old Amber Dunnigan. She's hiding in the bedroom with her seven month old child. So their boyfriend Bobby Cavazo is in the apartment making friends. Okay, if you're just joining us, then um, everything has been really peaceful down here at Pioneer Square Courthouse, Pioneer Courthouse Square, and then um, uh, some protesters or somebody started throwing fireworks um, at police is what it looks like and sounds like, and those people, it seems like, are not affiliated with the peaceful protesters, and the uh, peaceful protesters are moving down here, holding their hands up, telling police that it is not them. They don't want this peaceful night to be ruined. And there's a firework or gas. That's gas. He threw it back. He launched it back. They're shooting gas. No. Oh, no. Go to the right. We need to go to the right, Richie. Okay. Okay, that cop. 
cop is shooting. Okay, watch. Okay, yeah, they're shooting. Are they shooting rubber bullets, Scott? What are they shooting? They're. Sh <laughs> okay, so officers are shooting rubber bullets. These protesters have their hands up. Uh, it's going to be individually numbered apartments, so uh, two zero zero eight. Here's the thing. Like, okay. Okay. Sorry. Hi. Okay. <coughs> Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you, can I, I'll, I can roll my bag. I'm fine holding it. Okay, so we were at Pioneer Courthouse Square where everything was peaceful, massive crowd. Everything was peaceful. It seemed like some fireworks were being launched over here at this intersection. Uh, while the protesters at Pioneer Courthouse Square were, there were people speaking down there. It was a peaceful situation, and down here at Fifth and Yam Hill, there was some activity. I don't, we don't know who it was from, but police are down here now. There was some firework activity. We have not figured out who it was from, but police are now shooting rubber bullets and gas at these protesters. The peaceful protesters have made their way down to this intersection to say, "That's not us." We Black are being people. We want to remain people. Lives so we will see how this plays out. We need the police to know that Black Lives You know, and so just a half an hour before this, we were noticing some of what seemed to be provocateurs, like some folks that seemed to be on the periphery of the peaceful crowd, some attitudes that we had not seen last night, and then you started hearing the fireworks. So it's too bad for the people who wanted so badly for this to stay calm and stay peaceful. Maybe it can, maybe it still can. See. Preaching to each other is great. You know, it's we've been talking to, to the leaders that. of this who were just desperate for it to stay peaceful. Okay. Okay. That's why we're All right. Here. Okay, so the tactical team is getting back in their van. Why, and they're, okay, you have protesters throwing water bottles at them. Um, I'm not, yeah, there's a, bunch, there's a bunch of water bottles being thrown. But m many of them still have their hands up. Look, the majority, Richie, the majority still have their hands up. Okay, let's get across the street. Let's get across the street. Come on. All right, so you just saw a firework go off in front of a police <coughs> a police uh, car. I saw a protester throw that firework that landed in front of that patrol unit. All right. So for the most part, it was peaceful, and then it just seemed like... A a fringe element of this got out of control. Thank you. Thank you. You saw that they had their hands up. The majority, the vast, vast majority had their hands up saying we want peace as they, as they stood against that police line. We're here at Yam Hill and Fifth. We were at Pioneer Courthouse Square. These are like filters. Where thousands of people were listening to speakers. They were gathered there in the square and around the square. And then down here at this intersection, there was some kind of activity with fireworks. And the police were here. And police started shooting um, off gas and rubber bullets as people start continued to throw fireworks. There's and then the protesters that were down at Pioneer Courthouse Square made their way down here to the police line and said, this is not what we want, we want peace. And again, we said this last night, the leaders of this peaceful protest finally were, were able to finally get their message across and say, Friday night, Saturday, and sun, uh, Sunday. That doesn't mean they, can, they should take it out on the What happened ground. was not of them, they said. It was an element of people who wanted chaos. A few people, a relatively few, a relatively small amount of people who wanted chaos were able to create it Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And then on Monday, the fourth night of these protests, 
able to we're finally to able to achieve that night of peace. Yes, you know and, love. and it's been disrupted tonight. At this point, are we the thugs or are the police the thugs? Think about that. Are we supposed to believe in equality? Can you hear me? Am I speaking audibly? Men took their choice consciously and they wanted to preach the name of God. I'll figure it out next time. Man, I got I'll make sure I do it. Are you on Now, were they talking to us? I need a foreign control. Straight too far, go grab what you need. Oh, we're just having an audible at the Apple Store uh, glass break, and I don't think that we are going to take that from the street, right? No, we can hold. Okay, no. It's uh, Southeast Park and West Heaven 2 on the west side of the street at a business called The Coffee Pot. Caller says three of a watch someone smash out a window with a rocket, make entry, still inside. No description yet. Three for Coffee pot for a subject who broke out a window is still inside and possible break in progress. So one six two and start information plan. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, Facebook is okay. censoring everything that has to do with this protest. Facebook is trying to delete my account. They have tried two times today to delete my account. There's a so canine available. Can we have them roll our way? Yeah, I'm ready. Right. And a canine on the side. Can I get this? Two men for almost right away. I'm coming to get in here. That's the coffee pot, which is uh, Star Coma 2 on the west side of the street. Hey, can you all hear me now? Jeff, Jennifer, we're at Fifth and Yamhill. Things are getting a little bit out of control. Uh, the pro pro protesters, there are thousands of them out here. This is the biggest night uh, we've seen so far. But there was police activity down here at Fifth and Yamhill while the protesters were, uh, the majority of the protesters were at Pioneer Courthouse Square. There was some activity down at this intersection. There was uh, people lobbing fireworks at police, and police uh, started shooting rubber bullets and gas back at those people. And these protesters, the majority of them, they are saying they're not a part of this. They are saying uh, that this is peaceful. And I can tell you, when we were down back at the square, uh, while we were hearing these fireworks being lobbed and this gas being shot, uh, people were frustrated. They were mad. They were upset. And I mean, getting very emotional, saying this is not us. This is not us. So down at Yamhill and Fifth, about um, five minutes ago, you were just seeing a standoff between police and protesters. The majority of protesters had their hands up, saying, hands up, don't shoot. Uh, Portland police were throwing gas and were shooting rubber bullets if somebody uh, uh, before you could have wanted on 99th. Uh, the guys are gone. I called the guy. And uh, people were continuing to throw uh, fireworks. But, you know, this was very peaceful just 10 minutes ago. You had a massive crowd down at Pioneer Courthouse Square. <laughs> Actually, it looks like 29th point is crowded, so they didn't clear. They're gone. There were people speaking. I mean, like, several people had been speaking. Uh, it was going just fine. Uh, it was at the and then all of a sudden, uh, what seems to be and what I have observed tonight, the fringe group uh, started throwing fireworks. I will tell you that before. While we were making our way uh, back to the square, probably about 
like, you know, 30 minutes ago, we were taking, our, we were taking a little break and we were walking back to the square and we noticed on the outskirts of the square some people who just did not fit in with this peaceful group. They, were, they seemed a little bit more militant. Um, I can't call them Antifa. I'm not sure. I'm not going to confirm. I'm not going to say anything like that. But they did seem more militant. They were did not seem to have the attitude of this peaceful group. And then just 20 minutes after that, 20 or 30 minutes after that, um, that's when we started hearing the fireworks. And that's when police got involved. And, you know, just devastating to see that for the people that, you know, Jeff Jackson, we've been talking to them since last night. And they were able to have that dialogue with police yesterday afternoon. And they told us yesterday, uh, yesterday night, that they were devastated to see what happened Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Because that is, the leaders of this protest said that that is not what they wanted. They wanted peace. You know, one of the young ladies who leads this told me she cried Saturday morning. We're going to get a little bit closer. Should we, Scott, can we get a little bit closer? Should, we're asking our security detail if we can get a little bit closer. Because we know police are over here. Okay, he says we don't want to get too close, but you can kind of hear what's going on. It looks like there's a line of police ahead of us. They're on the march again. So they were down in Pioneer Courthouse Square listening to, look at this guy, look at this Richie, right there. This guy is up here. Um, we're going to keep coming here every day until we resolve this. He's perched right here, and he's got something in his hand. Look at this water bottle. He's right, dressed in all black. It's just, I'm not sure what he's up to, but like I, I've been saying, like I said early, a minute ago, there is just an element of people out here, and it's very small numbers, that seem to have the attitude averse to the peaceful protest. Um, okay, yeah, I think these might just be journalists or observers up here, perched up here. But, you know, the, the leaders of this peaceful protest that we have talked to uh, from last night and today have said they were devastated, they were hurt, that it happened, that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday got out of control. And I know, I know that are they watching. are feeling that way this that uh, this moment right now. Most people do have their hands up. So if you guys okay, there were on. Okay, there was a loud bang. Sure, that was. This ends when you change. Yeah. Because we don't need to change. We know that Black Lives Matter. You guys need to know that. We know that police brutality is wrong. You guys need to know that. We know that racism is wrong. You guys need to know that. You guys need to change, or we're going to keep coming here every single day, and you're going to be continuously wasting your flash grenades and your tear gas, and your gun bullets. You're going to be wasting all of your guys' stuff, and it's going to cost money, so let's just change this now. You can lower that, please. Dark blue. Smaller sedan, uh, unknown race male, backwards baseball cap, wearing all dark clothing. Okay. Where was that at? Uh, three four in the whole gate. Okay, it goes next to uh, kind of work Park. Yeah, it's just gonna be on the east side of that. Second Avenue and Yamhill. You can see this big crowd Three, is one, now two. turning onto Again, Second Avenue, as you can see. I know the police They're heading north. I know that the towards news is police. police were out here at this intersection just a few minutes ago. This changes when you guys change. Our this ends when you guys change. Do you guys want to see this over? Or do we need to keep coming back every day? Time, Earlier ago, um, Portland tomorrow. police tweeted out that this, the, the, the people that were at 4th and Taylor was not associated with the peaceful, the peaceful protest over at um, Pioneer, House, uh, Pioneer okay. House Square, so I'm not sure where these people are coming from, but there's a lot of people out here. Um, now they're chanting Black Lives Matter. And I will continue to keep bringing everybody here. 
Not, I mean, I didn't bring everybody here, but I will continue to keep to continue Catch Jack on the bottom of the scene here every day until this is over. So change if you want this. To we know that there has been be one over. arrest made. Where that happened, we're still working people to today. confirm we have that. To have 30, uh, people my producer tomorrow. just said at Fourth and Taylor, which would make a lot of sense because all of this started happening oh, at 4th and Taylor when police said uh, the next day? there is criminal activity occurring on Southwest 4th and Taylor. Uh, throughout the evening, they kept thanking everybody We're here everybody at 565 on 162nd. We definitely do there, see someone inside this building as well as uh, kind of chilling on the couch. Just for info, it's right into the village coin laundromat on the west side of uh, Several times tonight. And again, had all congregated at Pioneer Courthouse Square. And it wasn't until about 9.15 or so when we saw a few people. We could watch them live on television. It was a few people who started throwing things at officers uh, through the fence, Jeff, that had been put up around the core area of downtown there. And that's when they fired the gas and the flashbangs. And then this is the result. Uh, chaos started to erupt. And I think everyone was hoping that we'd have another peaceful protest like we did last night. But things are a lot different tonight. And there's actually more people out on the street tonight than there were last night. So now we're talking about thousands of people on the streets downtown. Remember, there is no curfew in effect for Portland tonight. This is the first night in three nights we've not had a curfew. The mayor was impressed with the peacefulness you, of the protest last night. He said, I don't think we need a curfew tonight. And so uh, this is a situation we have right now. So it just shows you how volatile exactly. this is. You have a peaceful... A so not, you take so the not, and the peaceful organizers Operating told us that. They Arrest said, we're, we're not associated with that. Exactly. These are people outside people coming knees. in and, in a way, ruining Why? our protest. One organizer told polluting our peaceful protest. And that's what we see tonight. And this, of course, has now been ruled in no sense, unlawful yeah. assembly by Portland police. And again, an arrest has been made, uh, which you wonder if they could clearly identify the few people as well as we could from Let up above uh, as like they tried to throw people. things at police through the fencing Punish there. The and you wonder too how much things. control they might be able to get of this crowd because there if are a few people shit, who have sort of taken these leadership uh, roles. They told us today they don't want to be called right. leaders, they don't want to be called right. activists, right. they right. are just right. citizens here, but they have certainly right. taken on this one 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 eight role. Zero. And now we're seeing this crowd and, uh, we're just north of okay. they were for, for most of the afternoon. So this is the fifth night of protest in Portland. Once again, uh, scenes are being repeated like this all across the country, in Washington, D.C., and in other cities as well. So Portland's not alone in this. Night, definitely uh, a much different protest than we had last night. Uh, and to Jeff's point, there is no, no curfew yeah, in effect to ten, in, uh, tonight. Morrison and Third. Okay, Morrison it looks like a her camper. Oh. They are saying that they're at Morrison and Third. They're in downtown Portland as uh, they are on the move. And police have moved in rather quickly, too, uh, every time something like this pops up. Uh, last week on Friday night, what happened though is I think there were so many smaller groups that it was hard to keep up, so that violence sort of went on a lot longer. Uh, Jacqueline, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Oh, give us an update. Um, now the crowd, we are here at Morrison, and I believe uh, third right now. Um, we've seen people spray painting some of the TriMet security cameras. Um, people are still chanting out here. Um, we can hear PBB off into the distance, kind of saying uh, it's an unlawful assembly. Matt, you can see that. Um, I think Matt was just getting some video over there of people spray painting some of the security cameras. Right now, we've been seeing a lot more tagging. Uh, the the on on the the um, now we're making our way uh, yeah, she down the road. Name, uh, um, I have the number if you want. You can see that people are gathering in that truck right there. Uh, he's being compliant so far. Uh, I think it's still open and he's pretty drunk. Coffee talk from Right, we're heading towards the Justice Center, um, but like we've been reporting on, PBB has, you know, that area fenced off um, right now, so we'll keep monitoring this crowd as it continues to move down third. Well, we can continue to hear PBB on their megaphone saying that it's unlawful, an unlawful assembly.
Yeah, we can hear that in the background, Jacqueline. Remember, just to bring our viewers up to date, Portland Police are now joined by about 100 state police officers. So they do have some enforcement, and then they do have about 50 National Guard troops behind the scenes in support roles. So uh, Portland Police uh, have the numbers tonight, but look at this crowd. This is much bigger than last night. We were talking about last night's crowd being large, but this is bigger than last night's crowd. And about that support role, that's really what the troopers and the National Guard are playing. And uh, the governor and the mayor reiterated that and said, you won't see them. They're not out there on the front line. So they are certainly there uh, as just support. They are not visible, and we can attest to that from our time. Okay, I see our Jenny Young on her camera right now standing by. Jenny, what's the latest at your location? Okay, we're at uh, Third and Taylor, where they uh, have marched to the fence. It's blocked off right here. But Jeff, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. It's okay. That just happens out here. Hey, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Have a good. Be safe. Okay. So that was a bike that I just tripped over. So this is the thing. This was peaceful. It was going well. The energy was good. It was. They, they were speaking at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Thousands of people listening. And you had a fringe group of people. We saw these people. Our security security details saw people throwing fireworks. Yeah, 5903, we're still trying to get out there. A, okay, I'm not sure it's going to be the closest person that we can have there. Okay, I, I don't know. Sorry. Um, uh, just to let me know who's going to go when they head that way. And, so, and it, they the have time. their hands up. I just want to note that. They have their hands up. The majority yeah, 59, of this group, 59, thousands 59, 40, of people, yeah. wanted this to yeah, be peaceful. You. Their hearts were in the right place tonight. They wanted this to be peaceful. Our security detail did see um, some three people three throwing, throwing fireworks at Portland Police a block away from Pioneer Courthouse Square, and that is when things went awry. Police started firing back with bull, uh, rubber bullets and tear gas. And it's gotten out of control since, but these people are trying to remain calm. But they are on the march. They've left the, obviously left the square, but they, it was just supposed to be another calm night like they had last night, ending at around 11.30, everybody going home. Last night they said anybody that is, that is out after this protest is over is not affiliated with us. And everybody went home except for a fringe group of people. And it seems like they've infiltrated this group tonight, and that's just too bad. To disperse now, and that's yep. right in the area where Jenny is. And at first, um, the group there was Jennifer. Portland Police is saying that uh, this group here at Fourth and Taylor has to disperse now. And I was telling you folks tuning in that this is the same area where they also said an unlawful assembly had been declared because they were there were throwing projectiles at police. Remember, there is a fence put up around several blocks of the core area of downtown. So vehicles and police are not able to get into that area, part of which surrounds the Justice Center, because as we saw on Friday night, they were able to break through windows and start a small fire even within there. So at one point tonight, about 9.15 or so, they started to throw projectiles. I saw them uh, trying to shove umbrellas through there to poke at police, and then things just quickly took a turn for the worse. And now this group is still gathering. I saw so a few minutes ago they were spray painting some of the TriMet security cameras. Go ahead. So uh, obviously they, they didn't want to be I, I identified. Do we have Jacqueline Abad standing by and her crew. Jacqueline, can you hear us? Uh, at 4123 Southeast. Yeah, I can hear you. Uh, male who had threatened their driver minutes, had been refusing to leave just for a front for a window. He's a no white 30s baseball cap, yellow bandana under a black uh, yellow bandana under a hat with a black hoodie, gray sweatpants. The protesters telling them not to interfere with the fence. Uh, we know that the fence is kind of surrounding the Justice Center. 
Um, we also heard some of the protesters saying that they were heading We're not to back down that now. way towards the it's justice center. Um, and so that's kind of the general direction that some of these protesters are heading down right now. And then we can know that Black Lives Matter to let the break out the window. Like we mentioned just a few minutes ago, we saw protesters break the meeting with the climate security cameras, hoping that they won't be identified. ago when all of a sudden we started hearing reports of uh, protesters throwing wa water bottles and projectiles at police officers at 4th and Taylor. And then that's when this protest turned. And it just shows you how volatile situations like this are. You can have a peaceful protest, it only takes a few, and that's what it looks like we had happen tonight. And I think it's important to note about that fence. To me, that was very symbolic yesterday because there were several people who sort of took control of the thousands of people and were able to pass a microphone through the chain link fence to police. Find a RO for this location. And those people were able to lead that group. Again, thousands of people, turn them around, bring them over the bridge, the Burnside Bridge, I believe it was last night again. And it was very organized. There was clearly a purpose and a theme here. And it didn't seem as organized. There did, they don't want to be called leaders or people in charge, but it, they, you know, yesterday they did that. And yeah. tonight it just didn't feel and they, the same and way. It didn't seem like they really took charge. Even if they didn't want to take charge, they mm -hmm. did take exactly. charge last night. Now like remember, the manager it was just a week ago, ago following this guy in the distance, the manager is in a charcoal color food, 2020 Rav 4. So the suspect just went to westbound on Francis from 8 The police two. officer had his knee on his neck for nearly nine minutes. Uh, the unrest has Stop continued it. in Minnesota and all across the country, although there was some very interesting They have a little about a large I have done nothing wrong, so please well. don't technically can't delete but my account. But they just but they're trying to, they're trying to get me out of my account. By groups of people they told who me I have seven days are still to prove being confirmed, who are still trying to be weeded out back. and figured out who are these people. Which makes no time of sense. Once again, the the amount of traffic, uh, vehicle nowhere, traffic all of a sudden, in downtown on some of these streets. It doesn't, it doesn't work. 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 It doesn't we're kind of That's at a standstill right now. We've seen some people um, plan it closer to the fence, heading out this way. Um, but for the most part, people are just congregating here on at Third and Taylor. Um, you know, we hear people chanting. Um, from this standpoint, we haven't seen PBB in this area yet, um, and uh, but we can see people dancing in the streets um, and people just kind of gathering here um, at Third and Taylor. But right now, I haven't, like, since we showed you our first live pick, I haven't seen PBB the other than the driving down, so um, down Taylor. Um, but, you know, we haven't heard them over the megaphone in the last few minutes. But but just a couple of minutes ago, we heard them saying it's an unlawful assembly, that they need to leave the area. Uh, but people are still gathering here. All right, okay. Jacqueline. 
Yeah, thanks, Jackson. Let's get to our Jenny Young now because she appears to be closer to the fence. And that is partly where Have some nice of this game. chaos started. Jenny? Yeah. <laughs> All right, nice so yeah, we just uh, made our way through the fence. People allowed one, two, us to get up here. You see a line of officers just standing their ground here at the fence. Thousands of protesters uh, with their cameras out and their hands up. We are at 3rd and Salmon, where it's blocked off right in front of the Justice Center, or uh, parallel to the, I mean, uh, yeah. So all of these uh, folks right here, most of them, Jennifer Jeff, like we've been saying, they were, everything was going fine. The night was uh, going as everybody had expected it to tonight or wanted it to tonight peacefully. Now you have police and tactical gear, dozens of officers guarding this fence so that these people don't come through. Uh, they've been shooting rubber bullets with, um, not here, not in this moment, but uh, back a couple of blocks um, away from Pioneer Courthouse Square is where they were shooting gas and rubber bullets because you did have some people throwing fireworks at them. And from what we could see, what our security detailed what could see, it looked like people dressed in what Antifa would wear. We're not saying that it was Antifa, but we are saying, but he said it, it looked to be that way. And um, we can tell you that there have been some with those types of attitudes in the group that we saw in the last 45 minutes, not in the group, but on the periphery of the group. We had taken a break about an hour ago and we were walking back up to Pioneer Courthouse Square where it was absolutely packed with thousands of people. And as we were approaching, we did notice some uh, some characters that seemed to uh, be out of, uh, to not be a part of this group, just acting um, in a, a manner that was was aggressive and and then about half an hour after that as we're showing you the crowds at pioneer courthouse square we started hearing we started hearing fireworks uh, a block away and it was people throwing fireworks at portland police portland police had to st started gassing and throwing and shooting rubber bullets and then the, the uh, crowd from pioneer courthouse square was they were on the move and they have uh, marched here to third and salmon they've had their hand most of the time had their hands up saying that this is a peaceful protest. Um, they have been yelling, take off your riot gear. I don't see no riot here. Portland police have declared this now an unlawful assembly. I don't know what this officer is doing right here, but look, he has his, um, he has his uh, flashlight and he's flashing it in these people's eyes. I'm not sure that, I'm not sure the point of that, the ta that tactic, um, they're, they are recording him. I don't know what that, what that's about, but, um, yeah, so again, this night disrupted by what seems to be a, a very marginal group of people who wanted to cause chaos, wanted to cause frustration, who wanted to destroy the goal of, of what was supposed to be tonight, which was a peaceful demonstration um, to honor uh, the memory of George Floyd and give these people, people of color, a voice. So it, it's just, it's too bad again. And Thank you to all the donors tonight. Go. Okay, let's listen them to them as they as they chant. Okay, so we're lined up here at Salmon and Third. Portland Police has the uh, intersection blocked off with a chain link fence. They've had this area blocked for a couple of days, and protesters were peaceful up until. About 30, 45 minutes ago, things got crazy. People, were, a, a fringe group of people, started throwing firecrackers at police, and the protesters went on the march because police started throwing gas and shooting rubber bullets. And so they went on the march, and they're here saying, "This isn't us. This is not what we wanted." But Portland police have already called this an unlawful assembly. Okay, so we, we have, will uh, see what and, happens. And hold on, just um, a second have, here, Jennifer. Uh, Jennifer Hoff's been tracking tweets from Portland Police, and what's the latest, Jennifer? They wanted to say, what, along with Jenny was saying, is that they want to make sure there is no confusion here, that there were those thousands of people who were protesting peacefully at Pioneer Courthouse Square, but they said there was this other group at the fence at about 4th and Taylor in the hundreds, so uh, quite a large group there that were repeatedly warned to not tamper with the fencing or force would be used. Uh, the tweet goes on to say that that group started throwing projectiles. That includes bottles, mortars, bats, fireworks. And police say they repeatedly told them it was a civil disturbance and that they were told to leave or force would be used. And that's what we saw. Yeah.
Uh, Jenny, is there any indication they're going to move away from the fence soon? People need to be loud. Jennifer, uh, Jeff, I can tell you that I don't, I did not hear police asking anybody to leave. Um, I don't know how to, I don't know the timing of that, but that, that, what we, the only thing that we have heard about leaving was in the last few minutes. Because the group, the majority of the group, the thousands, were at Pioneer Courthouse Square, not knowing that these projectiles were being thrown until until it got too, it got so obviously loud, and then police had started throwing the tear gas, and then people realized that gassing was going on, and just everybody kind of was up in a frenzy and marched down here. But and I mean, people were mad. People were stopping and telling us, "This is not us. Somebody else did this. Somebody not affiliated with us. This, they ruined this night for us." So I'm not sure if Portland police declared it an unlawful assembly while um, everybody was gathered down there at the square. Um, is that what you're saying? Is that is that is that what's the message that that you're talking about? Uh, Jenny, I just read to you the tweet that the Portland police yeah. put out. They are claiming that they gave ample warning before uh, they released the uh, force okay. on the crowd in the hundreds. They said that okay. was tampering with the fence. Okay, so um, what I can tell you is, yeah, it, it, I, we didn't see that. Um, I, I think, them, and, you know, there's so many people out here that, you know, whatever anybody's doing at the front of at the front of the line or in front of the group, you know, is not, you know, indicative of, of maybe the rest of the people, the rest of the group. But I can tell you, this group right here has not thrown anything from what I've been standing here for I, in the last, what, 10 minutes. And, um five minutes and nobody's thrown anything they've just had their phones out they are they're recording things and they're asking police yeah. you know to allow them to keep protest and you know they're just upset, obviously Marquee. angered Thompson. that this night turned uh, into what, chaos and that they're having, you know, that this is going to have to be broken up they, and they, said they whatever cannot continue she to she stay out here, but we don't see that. I don't see them going home anytime soon. They want, they they want their the right to protest, and they're mad that the few people that uh, wanted to disrupt it, that wanted to throw fireworks, did that and, and caused this. Things continue to unfold in uh, downtown Portland. And just to bring everyone up to date, this was a very peaceful protest. They had marched across the Burnside Bridge, gathering at Pioneer Courthouse Square. More people than last night, very peaceful until about a half hour ago when things exploded at Fort in Yam Hill. And then this is the result. And we keep hearing over and over again, it was just a few people on the outside that had come into this peaceful protest of the start of the trial. And now in just a moment or two, we're going to be welcoming our news audience from uh, Portland CW in on uh, what we're following here in about another minute or so. But we'll continue to follow this very, very closely. We have our Jacqueline Abad and Jenny Young, boots on the ground here, continuing to follow this. And uh, we will as well. This is just a large group of people that we are keeping an eye on. And... Uh, certainly balancing our coverage between uh, the peaceful protests that we've seen all day. 34, to reach your clear. In Tualatin to Pioneer Courthouse Square. Uh, no, I so there are you several on, uh, groups here. Like Sometimes it is hard to keep a track of what they are all doing. There, they got certain computers not working. You got clear as to the, there was a call as soon as I stopped, and I think the majority. Majority. That's that clear. Okay, you got it. I am for 40 seconds. We know that Portland police are out uh, of Everybody can go away. Guard, she doesn't want us and said we're not needed. Uh, Followed by a bunch of not nice behind things. The scenes role as well. Okay. So you and I prefer to Nathan. Right now. But remember that folks are covering a Copy. different streets. You know, we're just at one location. There's folks on other streets as well. This is a Queen 6 News breaking news alert. And we'd like to welcome our CW, Portland CW audience, who continue to follow our breaking news. Thousands Portland. on the streets of Portland that started out of a peaceful protest uh, turned troublesome right. about a half hour ago. I'm just you know the longest step of the line that we have our community as well tonight. For Jenny Young and Jackson Bond, have been covering the book. Well, yeah, I'm going to have you go to the call 954 on in your area. So over check 92 Division of Pal looking for a guideline in the North Mountain. Many of which had turned very violent. Yeah, we, but last night things were very peaceful. And I think I've got a priority for you in your area. Dialogue happening between the protesters and police. Go ahead. At about 915, things definitely changed. 
Okay, which this is that one four one one four topic start. Uh, and then female just approached our caller, fifteen year old, and tried to assault her. Uh, so the female still outside. A black female in her late teens, starts with her clothing, talks with the guy. Associated with the gray BMW or similar city on front of front. Um, we just heard a, you know, before you, we went live, uh, we heard a flash bang. We're not sure exactly what you it is. Four, can you try pushing that call to us again? Protesters are now heading down Taylor. Um, they gather yeah, over there at Kevin and Bird, um, kind of gaining up on the fence. We heard CBD over Jared the microphone basically saying, don't interfere with the fence. I got your back on um, it, but I'm now trying to let you We're kind of on the move again. Um, and we also saw uh, a couple of minutes ago people. Obviously not wanting to be shown um, as they demonstrate and protest. Yeah, reports of about uh, four ago now lying in the middle of the garden. The black man and another hat. No better description. That car, that the EOC punch stops. Sounds like they're beating on garbage cans and chanting George Floyd. Making Which our way down Taylor. Um, it's pretty dark out here. You can hear people beating on some type of drum. Um, push her way into the townhouse when our caller's daughter was coming back inside. They did get the door shut. And the sheer amount of people that are out here right now for this protest. Um, getting out the street here. There's some cars honking at us. You can see we're near the 7 Eleven at 4th and Taylor. Like we were talking about Jeff and Jennifer, this is completely yeah, yeah, different from what we've been covering from yesterday to today. We've been covering peaceful protests. A lot of the leaders of that protest that were at the Pioneer Courthouse. 3812 for 835. Why today, did they want them stopped? Quickly escalated after it's one of the weapons people. That there were a few people who were throwing projectiles. Copy. At Send another car, please. And now it's come to this. Another car, please. The tone of the crowd has completely shifted from calm and peaceful. Too angry and hostile. We're out here with, uh, there's a lot of cops um, out here now. We got training division and a by cop. And Taylor, we saw someone throw something. Thank you. We saw someone throw something at an officer, and that's when we heard the first flashbang of the evening um, over at Third and Taylor. Um, so now we're going to make our way. This, the crowd has stopped. We're now at, at Fourth and Taylor. The crowd is clapping, pounding on things. Yeah. Makes this unpredictable. It's just the mass scale of people. Like there's just so many people. It's really hard to kind of predict which direction we're going to end up going and what we're going to do next. That's Matt, um, our photojournalist here on the scene with me. Um, you know, when we were at Pioneer Courthouse Square, it was a peaceful protest. There were thousands of people. We were there when the group that was over in um, on the Bird High Bridge met with um, the people over at Pioneer Courthouse Square. And up to that point, it was peaceful. And within the last hour, it's and changed. And now people are, are shifting and we're running away from something. Or what it is. We're trying to stay away from the general crowd just because there's so many people out there right now. Did you guys see this or see what happened? Oh, smoke bobs coming in. Um, now the crowd is kind of dispersing down this area over here. Someone up there should please call the person on the floor. You hear flashbangs going off right now. Kind of a chaotic scene out here, another flashbang. A very chaotic scene, uh, very different from what we saw just an hour ago over at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Um, we're now shifting, kind of heading towards uh, the Apple Store and Louis Vuitton, Pioneer Place. Um, kind of getting out the street here so we can kind of show you a better view of the crowd. You can hear flashbangs in the background as we continue to follow this. The crowd is now dispersing down this way towards the Apple Store. You can just see the sheer number of people that are out here from building to building. Flashbang continue to go up. Someone of a block can do it for us, please. Here at 7-Eleven. 
This crowd is very rowdy. The energy is just different from what we've been seeing before. The police moving in in riot here, behind the crowd, following the flashbangs. The flashbangs have become more consistent in the last couple of minutes. Again, just like what Matt said, you can see you can see the smoke. You can see that the police officers in riot gear just outside that 7-Eleven. And you can see sparks fly right there with flashbangs. It's a very chaotic scene out here. Protesters are now throwing fireworks in the directions of the officers. You can now see that police are kind of getting into that intersection. The crowd has backed up to this area closer to Pioneer Place, kind of near where Louis Vuitton and the Apple Store are. Um, police continue to make their way. You can see that there's smoke off into the distance, but some of these people in the crowd are now moving towards police officers once again. Um, again, we just hope for multiple um, flashbangs. Um, we saw people, some of the protesters, throwing fireworks at the officers. And again, just kind of like what we were saying, PBB said it started with a few um, people kind of sparking this around um, around Fourth and Taylor, throwing projectiles at officers, and these quickly escalated to this. Um, now you can see that protesters are, have their hands up in the air. Going back to Big Five, the bar, I got to gear up. I didn't think we would have to. I didn't think we would have to go through this, otherwise I would have been a lot more clear. Flashbangs have stopped. I thought it was going to be peaceful again today. But again, there's so, so many people out here. Um, you can see, if you pan over this way um, towards Pioneer Place, you can see a bigger crowd off into the distance. But now some people are starting to trickle back towards where we saw police officers um, kind of administer those flashbangs. But again, this a bit, again a very different crowd from what we saw um, just a few hours ago at Pioneer Courthouse Square, where leaders of that protest called for a peaceful protest tonight. We were hoping for a peaceful protest like we did that we saw yesterday, um, but things again made a complete 180. Now the tone in the air is very people are very agitated. They're angry um, and hostile out here. Um, we're kind of monitoring the situation. Again, we saw people tagging buildings, more buildings than we saw yesterday. We saw people spray painting security cameras, climate security cameras, um, and a growing number of protesters are now kind of walking towards that 7-Eleven with their hands up in the air. And we want to remind our viewers, remember, Portland is not under Portland is not under a curfew tonight. The mayor felt that yesterday's protest was peaceful, that we did not need a curfew tonight. And I'm not sure a curfew would have made a difference anyway, but this is the situation right now. And we keep talking about how quickly this changed, if you just joining us. This happened about 40 minutes ago. It was a peaceful protest at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Then reports of trouble at Fourth and Taylor with a group throwing projectiles and fireworks at police. And I try to spot the differences here because there have been differences in each night. What our photographer Matt Rashley said, which you heard him say, is this group is just unpredictable. Tonight we are talking about just the sheer size of the crowd and how their behavior can change on a dime. They are, though, while we have seen some criminal activity, don't get me wrong, what you are seeing happening here is continued marching, continued demonstration compared to, say, Friday night where you saw continued looting, rioting, tagging, violence, fights breaking out in the middle of the street. I don't believe we've seen anything to that level tonight. Again, don't get me wrong, there has been criminal activity that we've witnessed on live TV, and which is why this is an unlawful assembly now, and police are telling people to leave. Uh, Jacqueline, any change in your situation right there at the 7-Eleven? Um, we heard another flashbang um, as, as some of the protesters are we're getting closer to the police officers. There's a flashbang. Now we're kind of backing up from that situation uh, right now. Robert saying that God wanted him to 55 as many people are running away now. 
and uh, we're just outside the Apple Mickey store. We're running away from that area. Um, we saw some flashbangs. Oh, the church on it. But there's smoke. You can see it's a very good number four. Some of those flashbangs that we heard um, from protests from. from Officers, yeah, but you know, protesters, yeah, people, protesters, 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 Poor thing, Taylor. There's a police line right here yeah. at the intersection, and there's a civilian truck. I've seen this truck out here throughout the protest. He's got a dog inside there, and he's just been running through this police line. Police have thrown a lot of gas. I mean, five or six, well, five or six gas cans within the last few, um, literally 60 seconds. And this guy, okay, police are approaching him right now with sticks. They've got, um, they've got their pellet guns. A stop stick. They have stop sticks. Um, again, I've seen this truck out during this uh, these protests, but Portland police. Okay, are they pointing up here? No, I don't think they are. But we had to, we're in a parking garage because we had to escape tear gas about uh, five or ten minutes ago. Uh, again, we, Richie, our photographer, uh, got a lot of gas in his eyes, and we just had to be up here. Okay, come down here. Let's get the shot down here. Okay, so. Portland police are trying to get this driver from of this truck, uh, trying to, I guess, get him in custody because he drove through a line of police here at Fourth and Taylor. Um, he's got a dog inside that truck. He drove through um, a line of police. Nobody's been injured though. There he is. It's a Dodge. It's like an older model Dodge pickup truck. It's a 97 model actually because it has that on the uh, windshield. Look at all this gas. Okay, where is he? Where is he? What do you guys see? Okay. Okay, so he's going towards Pioneer Square. A bunch of protesters are down there. Police still lobbing gas right here. Um, okay, so. Gosh. Guys, this all erupted within the last, got yeah, really bad within the last half hour. Everything was peaceful, everything was fine. What'd you say? Uh, what, what did you say? I'm hearing from our producer. What? Oh, you guys have a picture on the ground? Okay, so if you guys have a picture on the ground, I'll show you what we're seeing kind of from a more aerial view. A line of police right here blocking the intersection. What is this? That's a very fair assessment. Which street is this right here? thousands. I can't see the street. I'm sorry. Okay, so police are walking up the street here, line of tactical officers, they have uh, pellet guns, they have smoke bombs, they have um, stop sticks for that truck, that, uh, they're trying to stop some of that gas is hitting me in there right now, they're walking up Yam Hill, the protesters are at the end. Didn't really want to answer our questions and said want to talk about other things. Did say she wanted to get by herself before disconnecting from us. Why are we not protesting? So, I was like, I'm not going to be able to I'm not going to be not going to be not be not going to be not not be not be not not uh, no, contacted our caller, said he was suicidal, he has a plan, he didn't say what that is, doesn't have any mental health diagnosis, I know any history of uh, suicidal attempts, he hung up and then blocked by the with their megaphones telling each other stories, while we're over here getting shot at with tear gas by the police. 22. Okay, exactly, over there dancing, listening to music, that's not a protest. Everybody wants to hear your message because everybody's yeah, I am. Phone number for the Guarantee, give me a chance at that megaphone. If they're sitting around over there telling each other stories again tomorrow, I'm grabbing oh, sure. that megaphone uh, and I'm going to tell you what's straight up. So this is not what we're here for. Keep those arms like I said earlier, we, say, we uh, know Black Lives Matter. We know Black Lives is wrong. That's why we're here all here. Why are we over here telling each other? We know that the police know. And they're the ones that seem to not understand that police brutality is fucked up and that treating people a different fucking way because of their race is fucked up. We know it's wrong. 
If we're not united, we are not going to be sitting around in the fucking Pioneer Square dancing, listening to music, eating snacks. One, six, four. I love it. That's not what we came here for. One, six, four. Where are you in 168? 161 one, four, Northeast Costco, or. Uh, out front, suspicious vehicle with a subject, um, possibly slow. If you hear me, the, uh, if you hear me, plates, comment, uh, comment windows. me if you agree that we came here to protest, not dance and eat snacks and tell stories. Okay. I could be crazy. I could be wrong. Like Maybe comment. I'm not seeing it right. Maybe I'm not the leader. But that's how I feel. Am I wrong? Let me know if I'm wrong. Because if so, then I will change my mind. But that's just how I feel right now. You know, if it was clear down. Exactly. We can celebrate when the police change their minds, when the police make new laws for their officers. 59, 22. The tear gas announcement us back to Pioneer Courthouse Square. I'm going to stand here as long as I possibly can. I got it. I got it. Tomorrow, if I see the same thing that happened today, I'm grabbing okay, that, yes, that, that speaker, I'm grabbing the microphone, of whatever it is. Whatever it is, I'm grabbing it, I'm going to say my part. We did not come here to have fun. We did not come here to dilly-dally. We came here to protest and fight for our rights. What's up, yo? What's up, y'all? How y'all doing? Yo, what's up? Hell yeah. Training for, go ahead. Yo, what's up, y'all? Appreciate it. Hey, we're on the traffic stop. It's at about 12, I-84. Thank you. Uh, we're 6111. We're going to be transporting a mail down to detectives. Yep, 61 and going to Detective Hill. It's not Coachella. Oh, get in here. I love you. Yes, go ahead. For those folks down there, for a couple of long texts coming for the three of us. Uh, I got sent a donation for, for goggles. I'm going to go okay, get the best goggles that I can get tomorrow. Thank you, Zoe. Or thank you, Joey. I appreciate you, bro. I'm going to be down here probably 5 p.m. or earlier. I can't find them on any net, so if, if you, you can get a hold of them, home tell them to stand tomorrow, by. I need everybody to come down here with us. Okay. Hey, if you're five, here, what was that? Got a couple of bomb text code three coming your way, so stand by there. They're going to help you secure that. Coffee. Take it to the mayor's house. If we could, I would. If, if we could, we would, honestly. Hey. I appreciate everybody that's watching right now. I guess I gotta come back down here tomorrow. I thought if we, I thought if we were at least peaceful today and we ended in peace, that maybe we wouldn't have to come back tomorrow. Maybe we wouldn't have to come back the next day. But it looks like, it looks like this is my new nine to five, and it looks like I'm going to be postponing my music for a lot longer than I thought I would, which is okay with me. Edu five two. Edu five two five. Can somebody on the stop at 12 who's been tell me what the you best route to get there is different. from Grand? Everybody who shared and let their friends know what's going on. What's up with y'all? Yeah, that'll be your best tactic. Boy, what's good with you, bro? What's up with y'all? Live right now, boy. I'm pissed the fuck off. How are you doing here today? I've been down here since five. What's he doing down here? 
You getting video pictures and shit? Boy. Good shit, my nigga. Good shit, bro. I've been, I've been, this is like, uh, right I've been, 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 Man, I know where I'm ready for that. Man. 835. 835. Okay, so any traffic for the day, uh, stop here on ID 12 is on North Net. 835 is going to be pulling away to traffic for the traffic. There's other options here. Oh, any traffic on that uh, eastbound ID 12 is on North they coming in. Hey, be careful, be safe, bro. If more more people just disappear. My bad. Gotta interrupt the live a little bit. My bad. Let me read these comments real quick. Thank you for coming down, Erica. All that support. That's that's what's up. Four five, Gabby. You want to donate, honey? Donate. I'm gonna comment right now. Everybody who's asking. Um, do you want to recap why this started, where this started? We are peaceful at Hyderabad House Square. We had about 400 people before the police said about 100 or so uh, protesters yeah. not at Hyderabad House Square. At 3rd and Taylor, these uh, rogue protesters were throwing fire at the police. So police uh, declared it an unlawful How do you send it to them? Sorry, it sounds like something you'll teach me to be aware of. I know they're really pissed off. They're already dead. And that is what set this off about 45 minutes to an hour ago. And it's just been chaos ever since. Portland police throwing gas, shooting rubber bullets. These protesters running here on the way from gas, running from intersection to intersection. Now we are forcing all the where a group has a setup. Uh, 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 makeshift robots right here with outdoor furniture and some punch pumps. But the, the groups are starting to splinter. You know, that's been uh, the MO for Portland Police. Hey, if you're watching, you're watching share this. The more people know how to watch it, the more people know the truth. The more people, the people that get influenced and come down here. The last two or three nights, more and more people have been coming down here because of you guys. Because you guys keep sharing, because you guys keep watching. Most of this traffic and it's influencing other people around the world to keep coming over here. So hit the share button. Night, also, follow my page because I will be covering this uh, all they week. Have been, if they've you can been only uh, watch from home, I'll be covering it for you guys to be here. Water, snacks, first aid for protesters on the You know, for that assault team, uh, it's protest related because of the US knows. So, um, they've asked you to step back in the but Thank you, Ashley. I appreciate oh, you for tuning in. Yeah, Do a music video yeah, about this. I already got one in the works yeah, right now. I'm doing a song right now. What's up with your man? Good to see you. And we're sending uh, somebody from our site oh, or yeah. they need to take care of it. Good, man. All right, man. You too, bro. I'll see you around. You can't breathe. I'm our photographer, Richie. Took Naked protest. Just a few minutes ago. Take a moment to put some baby shampoo in it. Thank you, Code Man, for commenting there. Uh, but again, the, the um, cars that you're seeing around this corner downtown, most of them are about to hit him up. I need to figure out where he's at. I need to figure out where he's at. Broadcast info, clear it. Got the information on the park vehicles, 1090, almost like I-30, ground here, black jacket. Good, bro. I am reporting the truth, man. Thank you. Yeah, use it in your music video. Go ahead. We know that they are frustrated with corporate media. They're frustrated with police. And that, I want to tell you, I want to tell you something. Friday night and Sunday night. They were hostile towards the media. Monday night, when they, we allowed them to get their message of peace across. 
We told you we brought that to you live on the first time. Let's bridge. check where the crowd is right now. Uh, Looks like they're only probably about four or five blocks from that. All the staff are all here. Say on live television that this was peaceful and that the message that they wanted to convey is one of solidarity and peace, and that they just want to exercise their right to protest. And she said, anybody that is out has um, a past 11 or whatever time they ended at 13th and start last night was not a part of this group. They ended, they disbanded last night, and they went home, the peaceful ones did. And they have been much more amicable with the media, Jeff and Jennifer. I mean, much more friendly, allowing us to... Uh, to know if that's actually what allowing us... Uh, I will, Frankie. I'm about to call you when I'm done with this line, I know bro. It says yeah, we'll actually talk firsthand with the caller, then it gets more specific we'll interview over somebody, but um, we'll catch somebody here in a second. Copy. But, um, yeah, like you just heard that person. Oh, yeah, Bliss, MC, what's up, bro? That is what you got it. We're getting Friday night, Saturday, uh, no, I know, I went to, I went night. to Big People Five to try to get some industrial you know, gas masks. I don't really know exactly where to go, but I thought Big Five would be the place, and they're sold out of it. Morning, Dean, copy, and I'm coming over. They don't have any head protective gear. They don't have any light hunting gear. So, I'm not seeing Portland I gotta figure out where to go to get to the best. I wanna start getting football gear, you know what I mean? Like, I'm oh, okay. um, in middle school, 106 to buy stuff with 35. Color is watching this through the I'm almost tempted to buy a bunch of baseballs. Parking, uh, parking lot closest to the tracks, group of juveniles here. They did have a fire going, but it's out now. Of course, but there's a pack like of baseballs, baseballs for 20 down. bucks. It comes with like 50 baseballs in it. For when the police start acting, acting crazy, just chuck them. But nah, we're doing it peacefully still. We're going to remain peaceful. But I am starting to get pissed off a little bit. Or, Matt, uh, my language, man. I'm starting to get a little bit upset. One thing I wanted to point out, Jeff, to you was, you know, on Friday we saw a lot of vandalism. We saw a lot of destruction. We haven't seen any... Well, through there, we destroyed them from being there. Thank you very much, Kat. Thank you so much for that. Um, Come out to Camus or Vancouver? Yeah, um, bet. That's a good idea, yeah, actually. Um, so just to make that clarification there. Um, now we are at Broadway. Thank you, Regina. 13 and 14 today. Have gathered out in this intersection. Um, you know, today there were so many people. Okay, 5-9-1-3, 5 9 one um, and, you know, two gaps. Yeah, that call, so. Okay, the Jackson Middle School. Really dispersed. Uh-uh. Oh, uh, 5900 just recruited. All over the place, all over downtown right now. Um, and around, so you 20? Also a difficult one. If you are, um, if you have plans coming to downtown, don't come to downtown because, um, it's going to be very difficult for you to get by. It's a very chaotic. I'm really trying to keep this about the protest. I really am. But I have to do a quick commercial break. This is the best taco truck downtown. That's all I have to say. Thank you for the supervisor come to our location. Three nine two four, show me now. Why do you guys have to break into places? What are you talking about? We're not breaking into places. We are being peaceful. What do you mean? Thirty nine fifteen nine seven. You can take us. Tear gas back. on another level. Yeah, we need to start wiping tear gas back. Real talk. Three. We've been keeping the peace. I don't know where we're going. I don't even know who's eating us. We're separating from the rest of the group that's back there. Hundreds or so people who were there up against the fence, they were being asked to police were making that clear. Okay, I see our Jenny Young right now. Jenny, 
can you hear me and stop your situation where you are? We're going north on 4th. We just passed Washington. We're going down to the group. It looks like there's a much larger group uh, down here. We were with you a minute ago on 4th and Alder, and uh, where there was just a kind of splinter group there that was directing traffic, the um, asking the caravan of, uh, of people aiding the protesters. So the police shooting uh, at us isn't them. violent, but, but me here, posting uh, that the police are shooting at us is It looks like most people are heading this part. way. We're not sure their destination. I've been trying to talk to people to figure out uh, what's going on, what's the destination, but it's all out chaos. What's up, but this was this was organized. This was an organized show. event. They they had it uh, really well organized this afternoon at 13th and Stark. They even had rules. Hey, for the five. first rule, they said this at 15th and Stark this afternoon before let they me set go to out the front. on the march. Hey, for five. Fuck this. You guys no tell me to go back to Florida. They told the whole I talked to the caller on the call. He says he thinks no there might be people piling up uh, clients for the right riot. We're going to try to take a look. He said that person left. And we're going to take a look. And we're going to take a look. You know, that went awry yeah. because to it was too bad apples. Sabotage you. Or a hundred or so bad apples, according to Portland Police, what they put on Twitter. Uh, those bad I apples. I keep coming down here just for us to go walk across okay, the bridge so and then it's over. Okay, so this line oh, is getting this bigger as they go this farther. This isn't getting done either. Who was uh, leading we're this? We're about to go through Oak here. Not sure where, you know, everybody's splintered up again tonight. That's okay, how the news at police just splinter these groups up until they get smaller and smaller. I, mean, I haven't seen. If you are worried about getting hit with a concussion grenade or a flash grenade, I understand that. If you feel that that is a reason that you need to move a lot more forward or a lot more back to separate yourself from the larger pack and be able to get out. I don't Please need a fucking do that megaphone. now. I want everybody to know hey. that nobody is going to judge you for that. Hey, what are we doing? Nobody at all is going to judge Why you for that. Over if you have a medical condition, if you have a medical condition, if I can play that address worry. one more time, our computer is going to be It's going to be part of the police. Thirteen and I were talking. If you have those concerns, not for your not here to lounge around. We're here to protest. You can only make that call for yourself. We need to go back that way. We're getting shot at down there. Stay focused and look after your neighbors. Hey, we need to go back that way. We need to go back that way. I didn't come down here to waste my time again. I didn't come down here to waste my time. We need to go back. Illegal. We need to go back. Unless you're going home. You don't get to hold them in a chair. I didn't come here to waste my time again. I'm not a police. We're getting shot at down here. But we're all over here dancing and shit. We want to see those other three officers charged with accessory to murder. Please. I don't need to be an asshole, but I didn't come here to waste my time again. Yes, you have. I choked someone out. Two of my friends held them down. They would be charged with accessory to fucking murder. Yes, back this way. Follow the other three officers that came to the front. I'm sorry if I sounded like an asshole, everybody. I just want to get. I'm tired of wasting my time. I need to get this done. I just want to reiterate: seven to eight thousand people peacefully crossing the Burnside Bridge. Seven two four. Go ahead. Uh, area check 3700 block south 17. Uh, caller is the PGE repair desk guy. He's hearing a female screaming, uh, possibly from the south of there, you know uh, between so PGE and Trimet. Alright y'all, can you guys Stop let me know where, 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 where the rest of the group is? Five will be clear 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 clear. Escalation. Are they still I on force? Oh, oh, Thank you all so much. Never able to get a job you, you guys gave me that courage. I could not have done that. Those requirements. 
You don't deserve to be one hired ago, in one I could town. not have ever done that. You guys town. gave me the courage. Pizza. Everybody watching. No, no, no. Pioneer Square! Pizza. Pioneer Square! Y'all look so beautiful. Keep chanting. Hands up. Keep going while I talk to you. 59-11. So beautiful. 59-11. Can you show myself in 5910 or like? Four of our available units in the same direction as last night. We're just have to pick up on a 10 8 basis. Clear my draw. Six and more six. Six and more six. We're to come back tomorrow for so they can go back later. Don't get distracted. Stay focused. Nine eight zero four. Copy twenty two thirty. Burnside Bridge. Okay, so a big group of protesters is, are going to Pioneer Courthouse Square. We're told that the bridge, the Burnside Bridge, is closed. It's occupied right now with protesters. Is that where you guys are going? What did you hear about down there? Like, what's going on down there? It's the only way to get across. To get across the bridge and home. Yeah, to get home. What do you What do you think about how this turned out? I think it was a damn shame because of how peaceful it was and there was no curfew tonight and they still I have video of them just throwing tear gas and nothing was provoked. Well, there were fireworks. I mean, the, there was a friends group of people throwing fireworks a, a couple of blocks away from the courthouse. That while you guys, while everybody was like uh, listening to speakers and gathered in the courthouse, uh, Portland police said a couple of hundred people were throwing fireworks at them and they started throwing gas. I was right at the front of a couple of them and nothing was happening at the front of those lines. Maybe something happened in another corner, but not where I was. Were you here last night? Here last night. Why did you come out tonight? Uh, there was no curfew and I felt like I needed to do my part and uh, stop white silence and go out and uh, stand for people. What was it like up until these moments? Uh, I got gas, so it was painful. No, uh, I know, it is painful. What was it like up until the chaotic moment? Uh, a lot of hoorah, a lot of cheer, and a lot of uh, togetherness. Yeah. All right, so you're headed home. Okay, but you have to cross the bridge. And I, uh, yeah, okay, cool. That's where we're going. We've heard that um, it's uh, filled with protesters. So, uh, you know, they crossed the Burnside Bridge earlier. They occupied it uh, yeah, for it several somewhere. minutes. They were lying on the on the ground, face down, hands behind their back for nine minutes. It was silent. Hundreds spot. of people, thousands of people on the bridge doing that in honor of George Floyd in the nine minutes that he was on the ground suffocating. They've done that two nights in a row. I saw them do that last night. So, uh, Furbo, uh, they have went to two, the two pipe. shifters paired up for the day Yeah, Jimmy, we'll let you, we'll let you go to the bridge. We're going to have three Toxin Stein deputy cars. We'll let you and your photographer uh, make your way there. But Jennifer has something she wants to uh, share with us right now. And this is from where, Jennifer? We've been following, uh, you're looking Thank at you the bridge right now, actually. So that one group uh, did get off of the Pioneer Park Bridge. We also know that people are still gathering at Pioneer Park Square. But we've been following three by Portland police closely as well, and the police chief actually tweeted out a video. If we have that, I want to listen to that here for a minute, so listen in. 
I'm Chief Jeremy Rush, and I want to provide you with a situation update. Black McCallie, 12 minutes to the three. I want to thank you for gathered at Pioneer Courthouse Square. Your presence has been felt, and words are being heard. Several thousand demonstrators have remained peaceful and remained in Pioneer Courthouse Square. A group of several hundred individuals stopped the demonstration and approached the perimeter around the fencing of the Justice Center. Attempts were made to tear down and breach the fencing. Projectiles, including bottles, bats, and mortars, have been thrown at the police. Warnings were given that force would be used if the action continued. These actions continued and riot control agents were deployed. I want to reiterate that if demonstrators are peaceful and not engaged in criminal acts, they need to be mindful of the lawful orders being given and dispersed when directed. We do not want peaceful protesters to be subject to riot control agents and the actions of some in the crowd that are creating a public safety risk. Officers will continue to defend themselves, others, and the critical infrastructures and preserve life safety. So that was released by the chief uh, through the Portland Police Twitter account about the situation happening just after 9 o'clock, but it was tweeted out just about 20 minutes ago. So the chief has been doing that, keeping folks updated through video Twitters. Jacqueline, about you heard the chief mention there, uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square. It was empty a little bit ago as folks cleared out, but folks are gathering back there again now, Jacqueline? Right, Jeff Jennifer, there is a growing number of people who are now. Uh, we see the protesters coming up Yam Hill, um, and you can see the growing number of protesters out here. We've seen people on a megaphone. You can see over there, um, they're kind of talk, they're talking about we'll be, uh, the injustice that they face, um, and they're sharing their experience. All right, we'll and this is kind of a glimpse of what we saw you know, we saw thousands of people filled, um, thousands of people filled up in the square, sharing their stories of racial injustice, sharing their stories of racial injustice, sharing their stories of the black community today, calling for change. Um, and just to kind of reiterate, you know, people at that protest wanted a peaceful protest today, um, and obviously things quickly escalated. Now, here on here at Pioneer Courthouse Square, um, we're seeing a growing number of protesters. It seems that it is calming down here in the square. You know, you can hear people cheering. Um, you can see people gathering. It's not as chaotic as it was um, just a few minutes ago when um, we had some encounters with Portland police. Um, but if you take a look at Yam Hill, you can see more people kind of trickling in towards this way. Um, not sure what direction they came from. Um, like we were reporting, um, Portland police, when uh, protesters were getting too close to the fence, um, or if they were, um, th when they were throwing things at police, um, there were flashbangs that went off. Um, the crowd of thousands quickly dispersed. Um, and now this is kind of what Pioneer Courthouse Square looks like. Um, everyone dispersed, and now people are kind of congregating back to this scene. So we'll continue to update it, but it is nice to see the fact that it is slightly calmer here at Pioneer Courthouse Square just from the sheer chaos that we saw a couple of minutes ago um, with the flashbangs, we saw tear gas. Um, um, and if you look over here, you can hear people on the megaphone giving away supplies um, to people, water, food, snacks um, to people. and. Um, as we continue to show you kind of what's going on here, um, people continue to congregate here at the um, Pioneer Courthouse. Well, well, Jacqueline, hopefully, maybe in Jennifer this night, they're not going to be 94 or started. In 94 to 10, I think the mobile field for it. Maybe it can end peacefully again, which would be nice. Okay. Interrupted by, as you heard, a group of about 100 uh, Portland police say that really started throwing things and sort of instigated. All the, all four, the four, chaos. So hopefully we can have a peaceful ending. To the yeah, I'll be by four. And you can maybe see that in in two different areas. You're seeing that group that was able to come back together and cross over the bridge mm -hmm. Sylvia, peacefully as well, and sort of get to that with 13th and Stark area where they like to start and stop some Let's of these go. things. And so if now you also have the group coming back to find the Courthouse Square, uh, Thank you, I, I can't imagine what it must be like to try to wrangle.
uh, this group together, whether you're the leader of the group this. or even police, as you try to we sort of control this. the situation. We're talking thousands of people I here. I we have to folks can get out I of the fray and, and the crowds and come back to the areas here we're making a where they can right now. continue Everybody to push their me. message. You guys give me the courage to continue to do this. It wasn't for you, I would not be here. And remember, Pioneer Courthouse Square, one of the main purposes when it was first designed years ago was to be a place for public discourse or gathering for, for, for events and for protests, for peaceful protesting. Yeah, and that's you have the on to call, GD Sergeant, call my phone, Mr. Officer Lincoln. Back on a peaceful note, but the uh, night is still young. Once again, there was no curfew in effect today for the city of Portland. The mayor said he didn't feel it was necessary, and I'm not sure that's an important point. Curfew or not, people were, were out there anyway on, on these past night. The other part is, remember the core part of downtown is fenced off. You know, around the courthouse, those four square blocks are fenced off. So uh, that's another thing to remember. Whenever there has been trouble, it's been going up to those fences. That's where we've seen the trouble start beginning. There's a confrontation with police on the other side of the town. And that's what we saw tonight. I haven't seen fences put up around that area before. And we've covered several protests over the last few years. And that's the first time I've seen actual fencing put up around that core area. But if you think back to Friday night and the looting and rioting and damage that we saw, uh, they certainly have to take steps just in case, uh, like we saw what happened tonight, despite last night uh, being what a lot of people do to expect. Again, just in case. But, to your point about the curfew, though, Jeff, I think uh, it's, it's symbolic almost that they didn't have one because it lends itself to sort of this unspoken trust, maybe, between, between groups and people as they continue to uh, hopefully move forward and progress and, and continue to have conversations amongst each other on how change can happen so that everybody where we live and all across Jeff the country feels equal. Yes, yeah, Jacqueline, Jacqueline, go ahead. Um, so the crowd you, is uh, here at Pioneer Courthouse Square is growing. You We're seeing, uh, you can see off into the distance, more What's protesters, that, hundreds of protesters heading to um, the square area. Um, just a few minutes ago, we saw some PPB officers heading into the Pioneer Courthouse yeah. there. And there's a line oh. of protesters outside the courthouse um, you can see them off into the distance, um, and we saw a line of police Jordan, officers entering the courthouse, and now there's people just standing out there. Um, we, also, we also heard um, people on the megaphone telling people to stay together. Um, some people have said, don't get killed, stay together. Um, so that's Thank some of the so some of the things that we're hearing out here. Um, and as we continue to be out here, um, the crowd continues to congregate here at the Pioneer Courthouse Square. Um, and like we were mentioning before, you know, earlier today, this was a place of peace. People came out here to share their stories, to get their voices heard. You know, we heard from members of the black community who shared their experiences. This was a peaceful protest that quickly changed because a few people uh, decided to, uh, according to Portland police, cause, uh, you know, throw projectiles at them at 4th and Taylor. Um, and that's when things quickly escalated. Now we're seeing people come back to this area where, you know, some of these protesters were once before. Um, so we'll continue to monitor this, but again, the crowd is growing here at Pioneer Courthouse Square again. Um, this crowd was dispersed after there were you know, flashbangs um, in the area, and people kind of ran off into various directions, but now people are congregating back here, um, and things are calming down. When we did see police going into the Pioneer Courthouse, things kind of, the tone kind of changed. Um, people were a little bit more tense when they saw officers, uh, but now that they're inside, and um, as people continue to congregate, things are kind of calming down. Um, there's cheering going on. We've heard people chanting Black Lives Matter. Um, and so um, this is starting to look like what we saw earlier today when the group from the protesters over on the Birdside Bridge met the protesters here at Pioneer Courthouse Square. This is what it looked like a couple hours ago before things quickly changed. Um, but right now it seems 
Got the canal three go with that. Yeah, seven seven one seven southwest. Like we saw Avenue. things quickly tra- change around nine fifteen today. So and it's uh, Multnomah Dental Care. Gets too bad. Covers the Jacqueline, back side. I can motion. see from my camera is I can see that officers are inside the Pioneer Courthouse. Thank you. Taking a look at the crowd and the crowd is definitely taking notice. They're strobing lights at them. They're holding signs up to them. They're definitely getting the attention of the crowd. You know, earlier, uh, when there was a peaceful protest, we saw officers going in there. Um, yeah, they just cleared. When escalated, we saw more officers go in there as well. Okay, and thank you. Uh, when, thank when those protesters you. saw the officers going in, they kind of formed a line outside of the courthouse. And uh, like Matt said, they're they're holding up signs um, to the police officers. Um, the, the dialogue between police officers and protesters uh, has changed. Um, we saw people on megaphones yelling at them. Um, a very different scene from what we saw yesterday. When, you know, um, what is going on? Okay, we can see Portland police back here near the scene, near Pioneer Courthouse Square. You can see we saw three squad cars just driving by. And you can hear people chanting our street. Things are kind of revving up a little bit. Tone. As we're out here, the crowd continues to grow. Um, I would say there's a couple hundred people out here, maybe a thousand people out here. A while away, but uh, 170 in division. A couple of colors say, uh, and a vast people majority fighting. of folks already made their way over to the east side on the Burnside Bridge. Oh, so I'm, say, hey, I'm going home. I'm disappointed yeah. that there was some violence tonight. Some They're chaos. at night four, night four, four, night five, four, four on Texas. And they just, they got or Jack one, actually. And they said, I'm just going home. They were a little bit disappointed, over. but they were making their way. They're already across the Burnside Bridge. That was Bro. the vast majority of the people. We saw a few thousand on the Burnside Bridge. But at this hour, we have folks gathering back at Pioneer Courthouse Square, where the protests started originally earlier this evening after they made their way across the Burnside Bridge. So I keep mentioning if this can end peacefully, Jennifer, tonight, back at Pioneer Courthouse Square, maybe this protest was a success for the folks who want change and justice. I think to be able to gain control of that and continue to the community that we can do. Another call around this says most people left in two vehicles, one a silver SUV eastbound division and a dark two southbound one. Wonderful, thank you. Yeah, I know Portland is not alone. This scene playing out in many major cities all across the U.S. In New York, they have looting tonight for, for another night in a row. Other cities are reported peaceful protests with some outbreaks like we saw here in Portland that were quickly under control. For the most part, protests across the country were peaceful once again tonight, including in Washington, D.C. There are flare-ups in these protests, but uh, for the most part, they're remaining peaceful. So for about 45 minutes, we had chaos in downtown, but it appears but most of that is under control right now. Hopefully, you never know. But this is what we continue to monitor right now. The Portland police have not uh, tweeted or released any new information in the last 30 minutes. At one point, uh, we will witness uh, information where you have a commercial fire, the Lamont Block Building, 722 South 2nd, and places inside. Calling the uh, 
other groups that we were seeing outside of Pioneer Courthouse Square, declaring them. Uh, 722 Southwest 2nd, and the ELC is getting outside right now. Yeah, so just a few minutes away from the 11 o'clock hour, we'll continue to recap the event. But we continue to follow the events here on Queen 6 News. Uh, fifth night of protest here in Portland and across the country. And this was probably, as far as people, the largest group that we've had in the last five nights. It's growing, growing uh, nightly. Subject left. Two different cars, a silver SUV eastbound on vision, and a dark blue stomach. Zero. And they're saying there's nobody left there. All right, we'll go find them. Excuse me, I gotta go find them. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. If you want to wait, if there are ways down, I can advise them. It's fairly close. Now we're at 122 in uh, Division. The mayor didn't put it in yeah, because it. he said it was an issue. Yeah, I mean, he was hoping it would happen tonight, but hopefully it will end that way. Uh, for no, CW, have... Portland CW viewers, take care. Join us over on Channel 6 for Point 6 News. Have a lovely day. Once again, you're watching Point 6 News here, live coverage of the protests in downtown Portland tonight. Jennifer, what strikes you about this uh, the protest tonight is the fact that we have many more people than we had last night. And uh, there's our Jacqueline Abad right there. And uh, Jacqueline, let's go to you right now. What are you noticing? Is the crowd continuing to grow? One zero zero one nine seven. The crowd does continue to grow. We're seeing more cars coming in this area. Um, about an hour ago, it was empty uh, for the most part. We had to disperse. We saw using flashbangs, tear gas. Um, so the crowd quickly dispersed, but within the last maybe 30 minutes or so, people are again congregating back here at Pioneer Courthouse Square. You can hear the group chanting as well. We're good right now. Um, but to be honest with you, things do get tense. Um, it's calm right now for the most part compared to what we saw um, about an hour ago at, you know, 3rd and Taylor, 4th and Taylor. Um, but uh, whenever we see Portland police, you know, drive by, things within the crowd get a little bit more tense. Um, and uh, again, we saw some officers going into the Pioneer Courthouse and just across the street there. And uh, a group of protesters are lined up out front of right, that courthouse. Um, I'm going to wrap this live but up. But as you can see, I need you know, watching this, hit the follow you know button people continue to fill the Pioneer tomorrow. Courthouse Square. This when is I what we saw down, earlier I'll be today. Going live. We were covering I would a very say, peaceful check protest my Facebook at where people had a chance to talk and share dialogue about their like experiences. Um, they Facebook shared yes, stories of racial injustice that they've experienced. Live. You know, we've heard stories from people who've been pain. We've heard people hoping for peace. And a lot of the people that were out here at Pioneer Courthouse Square earlier today, 
because without you guys, chanting, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have the ball. Um, they were chanting peaceful protest, Akbar. You know, those were the same people that were out here listening to each other's stories. Um, but, you know, around 9 o'clock, things quickly changed when I'm gonna wrap this said live that up, a Make few sure people over, separate from videos, the group that was originally here was throwing projectiles at officers, and things quickly changed. You know, the tone so of that crowd changed. You know, people dispersed. And now we're seeing um, protesters slowly gra uh, slowly gather here back at Pioneer Courthouse Square, but we'll continue to monitor, monitor the situation. Um, throughout the newscast. Jeff Denver, back to you in the studio. Coming up on the 11 o'clock hour here on Coin 6. We're at the top of the 11. Let's begin Coin 6 News at 11. This is a Coin 6 News breaking news alert. And our breaking news here in Portland, protests in Portland have started out peaceful tonight, quickly turned violent around 9.30, and protests have started on objects including fireworks at police, and a fire battle with tear gas and flashbacks in the mix. Really, all day, protests have remained peaceful, and it wasn't until about 9.15 that there was a small group of people considering, although it wasn't like there was a brainy white male of the people who were involved today, but they directed Let's get back to Pioneer Courthouse Square, which cleared out during that okay, chaos. But now yeah. folks are gathering there, and that's where Jacqueline Four, zero, 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 is zero, 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 tonight. And Jacqueline, the crowd about a half hour ago, Pioneer Square was empty gotcha. because of all the chaos, and now folks are coming back. Tell us about that. And there was, you know, the dialogue between Portland police and the protesters there quickly changed. And um, I'll give you a look at the Pioneer Courthouse where you can see now they're back. Just a few minutes ago, people were congregating here at Pioneer Courthouse where you can see that people are dancing. That's on the move. Um, as you can see, um, taken from us. They are on six. And they're heading down. 3920 copy, can you send it to me, please? They're heading down that area over there. Um, you know, Jeff Jennifer, just to give you some perspective, you know, earlier today, there was a large gathering here, a very peaceful gathering. That's just ridiculous, honestly. And I think there needs to be some change. There needs to be justice for these people. There needs to be accountability for the police officers that's out here doing this. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to see a cycle. And I really think this needs to continue to happen for more than just the few days. And we're going to be assigned that each person be called for timing. There were moments of trouble. Just after Poor David, clock, Poor there was a skirmish between Poor David, police Poor and a splinter group of protesters. It appears police used tear gas and flashbacks to disperse the rowdy crowd. Copy. 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 All right, back out here live after so much hope and optimism filled the night. Tear gas and flashbangs filled the night, and police said it had a lot to do uh, with the rowdy crowd and criminal activity near the Justice Center. But again, as you saw in that piece, so much peace and peaceful demonstrations for most of the evening. Let's send it back to you. Thank you very much. Many of the protesters who were in downtown tonight just crossed the Burnside Bridge over to the east side. Now, Catherine Cook is there now to continue our coverage. Catherine? Maggie, just a few minutes ago, this whole bridge was blocked as we watched about a thousand protesters or so cross over here to the east side. Several dozen are still making their way across uh, at this hour, but again, most of them have crossed uh, from earlier this evening. They are part of that massive group of protesters you saw earlier tonight. It was Dr. definitely Dr. Impressive Dr. in the area of their unit number gathered together. But at the same time, suburbs outside of bigger cities, the like color of the first day was too well, the but cause. the problem was that the apple that was those demonstrations down. tonight, yeah, while like, much smaller in size, more. it was extremely powerful. Drop back. Very good. At the intersection of Northwest Cornell and Murray. 
neighbors feel like they're at a different kind of crossroads. What's been happening in this country for hundreds of years is not okay. And it needs to be the top of 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 but she says it's every officer just different. I've seen a lot of racism over and over, and it's important for people to step up and talk about it and address it and have those hard conversations. We be mindful of the lawful orders everyone. being given in this first one direction. We do not want peaceful moment. protesters to be subject to riot control Holes. agents and the actions of some in the crowd that are creating a public safety risk. Officers will continue to defend themselves, others, and the critical infrastructure and preserve life safety. I do have Emily Please, any of you watching I think our police keep getting dressed in our situations tonight. And once again, when we hear it, there is no person in downtown Portland tonight. I'm not sure that we're going to be different because it hasn't made a difference the last few months. But, uh, Disregard. That's the situation. Okay, like, we, we certainly want to continue talking about the, the positives here that are happening. Our Jenny Young, you can see, is live on scene here, too. So Jenny, I know at one point you were following possible. a group. Or where exactly are you headed? Because I actually find them really powerful. Well, Jennifer, we were diverted over uh, to Burnside. Uh, to, we heard there was a group over there. But uh, those people, it seems like, were just going home. So we're walking um, west right now, coming up. On, uh, like the Apple Store uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square, there is where they're leaving. Uh, we're at Yam Hill, Sorry. and, and you see this massive crowd. I guess they're leaving where Jacqueline and Mal were. Again, we we're making our way back from Burnside, and it is dead over there. It's quite amazing how you can go from what just seems like Portland on a normal night, food trucks and musicians, and just peace on the street. To this, um, I, it's, I think these people. Hey guys, where's everybody headed? Where's everybody? Where's everybody headed? Nobody wants to talk to media, I guess. Um, yeah, they said they're just following the crowd. So um, we're just walking along. We're walking along west here, along Fourth. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to the Justice Center or not. I will be here every day. What was going on? Um, I know that there were a, uh, there was a huge crowd that Forty did go back years. to the courthouse, Jennifer, the, the square over there. What was going on over there? Uh, if you're asking me, over up, I offer to talk with her. I'm having... Okay, let's, uh, let's let Jenny Young go right there. This was the scene around 9.30 when the violence erupted. Let's listen in. This is when a group of protesters started going for jekylls and fireworks at Portland Police at 4th and Yamhill. They fired back. Keep in mind, there were like a, thousands of people at Pirate Courthouse Square at this point, and then police moved in. Riot police moved in at 4th and Yamhill, including this truck. They tried to get this truck to stop. And it was up and down the street. They kept moving there. on this truck. And we were watching that. Meanwhile, once this started, the peaceful group of Pirate Courthouse Square broke up in all the chaos, and folks started going every direction in downtown. But when you see those... Uh, images of confrontation. Remember this, too. Yes. This is what happened at Pioneer Courthouse Square for m most of the afternoon. Thousands of people sitting in solidarity and sitting in their feelings and listening to people talk about the movement and the change and the justice that they want to see here and all across the country. Uh, more than a week now after George Floyd died of police custody after now a former Minneapolis police officer had his knee on his neck.
Copies and he's on the phone now. Thank you, 23 South. Do we know what the status of the jail is over here? I haven't heard anything out Chuck. Over at what we're seeing, right? about seven, eight, oh, eight, 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 eight,
Um, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. For you in one six eight. I'm here. So we're at one eight one in the O'Reilly's parking lot nearby. Our caller saw someone break the windows out of the car. Three. Three. One three. Right. For you and one one eight, uh, both of these you gotta be canceled. Revolution Hall, 6 p.m. Kesley. And uh, the, the vest right there, he is yelling at these officers. It, is, it looks to be personal for him. He is yelling uh, directly at these officers. And, you know, they, they just stand here until they're given the order, until it gets uh, too, uh, too chaotic. And once, they, once they're given the order to fire gas or fire rubber bullets, they do. But so far, we haven't heard Revolution anything uh, like that. Uh, uh, they've just start. been here within the last um, few minutes or so. Again, they came from uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square trying to get to the Justice Center. That was kind of the, the word that we were hearing on the street, if Suspect you will, West as people southbound were scattering from Pioneer Courthouse Square. Or Nissan or Honda, um, even we Alexander. are in an area, like we're giving you this aerial shot from a building um, where it's only media. And we're a little bit concerned because we have seen a couple of protesters come up here. And if they are in the area where we are, we're concerned that police might fire gas up here because that is what they did um, on Sunday night, according to our security uh, details. So we're kind of hoping uh, that there's no activity up here and that the protesters that try to come stand over here do leave and just keep it peaceful. But for the time being, I mean, to reset this scene, you know, we followed these guys since uh, 6 o'clock this evening where they gathered at 13th and Stark, a very organized group of um, thousands of people, and they were. They said that the, the rules of tonight were, number one, no violence, and they marched from 13th and Stark to the Burnside Bridge, occupied the Burnside Bridge, then marched over to Pioneer Courthouse Square and met another group. And it was massive, the biggest group we've seen all weekend, thousands of people. And then, you know, that, that marginal group of 100 or so, according to Port Portland Police, uh, started lobbying fireworks at, police, at an intersection a couple of blocks away from uh, the, the square there. So Portland Police declared an un unlawful assembly. Okay, do you mean the telephone number? Uh, they're still in route. Do you need some food or can you upstairs and get them? No, they can just come right in. Grabbing a little bit of them now. Thank you. P1641. Caitlin, get down here. I can't hear anything. You're going to get her tripped up. One baby, I'm going to What do you think? I know, I know. Jeff, Jennifer, um, we can hear yeah, you, but where we're standing right now, within the last few minutes, protesters have started to gather. Um, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Hey, guys, I can hear you. Can you hear me? 
Can you guys hear me? <laughs> Thank you. Of course, quick clear down on our side. I can hear you. <laughs> I can hear you. I don't know why you can't hear me. Yeah, that's what you have. Can I have you, folks? Yeah, uh, our uh, dispatcher did it. Thank you. As long as they have it, folks, it's fine. That's right. That's right. Six <laughs> There was no fighting, there was no looting, nothing, nothing, nothing. I, <laughs> excuse me, I've been yelling quite a lot. Um, <laughs> um, then we all stuck together. We stayed together as a group and we marched back across the Burnside Bridge, back to Revolution Hall. Where, we, where you just heard those amazing people, where you were able to hear them. And that's what needs to be heard. That's what needs to be projected because I'm so fucking tired of seeing all of these streams that just say how terrible we are, how we're causing all this destruction. That's not what's happening. We have clear, tangible demands that need to be met. That, that's what needs to happen. We're gonna be out here every day until our legislators and our congressmen and women listen to us. That, so I will be here again tomorrow. I will stream all night. I hope that this reaches more people than whatever, whatever is deterring from our messages because that's not what needs to be heard right now. So um, I really appreciate everyone that's watched and uh, again, I'll be back tomorrow. So, thanks everybody.
473 checking status. Zero three zero, pine and six. Pine and six. Target brand beer. One second. First, Carla. I think. Okay, cool. Okay. Jacqueline. Don't throw shit. Peaceful protest. 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 Just again, you guys. With their like the things strapped around their uh, their vest there. Wilson! 
We also understand that all that for one fucking person to secure the facility, not in a role to interface with the protesters at all, but to help secure the facility. Do y'all see that shit? So that's that shit's fucking crazy. Really this group of a few hundred protesters who refused to leave, sort of standing there around the outside that fence perimeter and the police inside. Oh Jamie Rush, Chief Rush, saying earlier that about nine o'clock that group uh, had really started causing hey, trouble. Hey, hey. Trying to reach the oh fence, and according to the chief, they were okay. throwing things at police, bottles and bats and oh, fuck. So that's when they deployed the, My whole the riot flight. control tactics with the tear gas and the, the flashbangs. Um, then it was seemed to just be a standoff for a while, as we watched during this newscast, and, uh, and then it just uh, heated up again. And they uh, used those tactics to try to disperse the crowd. Yeah. It seems to be working, Maggie. Yeah, definitely. And we're pulling up now a uh, tweet from the Portland Police Bureau. They just sent this out a few minutes ago. It says demonstrators nope, are parking for Gentiles and police. Point. Some are coming up from above in a parking garage. This is very dangerous for all. The sound truck is advising that this is an unlawful assembly and to leave now. We are telling people to turn around and leave northbound. And I should point out there was one sent out less than a minute ago on top of that saying we are advising the crowd that this is an unlawful assembly saying that again we will be making arrests and using force that may include riot control agents and impact munitions leave now disperse well, bitch, I'm in my to car. the north so again that's from portland police i should point no, out I'm really that said this multiple times this started with a confrontation with police a couple of hundred by mike's estimates protesters who came to the fence that laurel was talking about the one that's surrounding the oh God, justice the center and then right they had a clash with police and that's when police started pushing protesters back since then just monitoring social media and particularly the accounts of some other reporters in the field, those from the Portland Mercury and the Oregonian, and then also local civic leaders, um, those we've spoken with who work with um, agencies that advocate for social justice, have been saying that people in the crowd who weren't part of the initial confrontation, again, of just those couple you hundred out of thousands, are really confused by this and I will, feel I will, like I will. this I will. is not warranted by police. It's quite possible oh, yeah, that they're no, just not seeing the instances not in that are instigating this. But it kind of speaks to the confusion I'm that you have you thousands of people you get behind the size of the one that we saw. And then there is a clash with a you know small portion of that group. Yeah, Jeff, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Drop the mic, please. Jeff, I can hear you. I can hear you, Jeff. Can you hear me? All right, so we moved to second in the end hole, and the reason I wanted to come back and talk Okay, so we did watch um, that entire ordeal play out um, right here at the fence at Force and Salmon. I want to show you the, what's left. So, Richie, if we could turn the camera around. Uh, we're leaving this area because protesters are gone, but this line of police, uh, they were being, um, protesters were throwing water bottles from um, this area of right here where the bushes are, this building. Yeah, this is second in the Amhill, we so were standing up there uh, earlier, and I told you all that um, police, protesters uh, kind of uh, gathered uh, right there, and we needed to leave because it wasn't safe, corner, it's, you know, for protesters to be following the media and um, getting in that area. And what they, what happened is we left, some protesters left, but some stayed, and they started throwing things at police. They started throwing water bottles. They started throwing even glass bottles. Police, as soon as that happened, police did not. Not, did not hesitate to shoot flashbangs, to shoot gas. We saw a protester uh, throw a firework at police in that line of police. Uh, we saw protesters throw um, gas canisters back at police, and you saw that line of police just kind of covered in smoke. But, um, you know, I, you did see them kneeling, and, I, you know, I know that we kind of thought that this is, we've seen that across the country as a sign of respect, but they were putting on their gas, uh, gas mask, and we were having audio issues at that moment and I wanted to tell you that when you were seeing them kneeling it was because they were trying um, to oh, situate their mask because it was like our security guy noticed it and said we might uh, we might need to leave this area because they're um, they were securing they're securing their mask which means they might be ready to throw gas and sure enough that's what they were doing uh, police obviously not happy with the situation, tweeting within the few moments uh, that they will start making arrests if people do not leave. So uh, we're heading back towards uh, where these crowds are splintering. Uh, we'll send it back over to you guys.
Shut up. Yo, look at this shit. We certainly want to bring you the pictures of what's happening, but it's our job to, to try to stay safe at the same time. Jacqueline, are you all right? All right. We saw the uh, flashbang fly over our heads, so we just had to get out of the situation there. We're seeing the leaders. Yep, they come in from the south, it's right totally secure. We know Portland Police is trying to have us in front of the street. Oh, okay. You know, it gets confusing. You don't know uh, what's gas sometimes and what's fireworks, but this definitely looks like gas right now, Jennifer. And you know, there's the Portland Police making their way down the street, hurting the crowd out of the area. Uh, you know, uh, this was a peaceful no, protest at 9.30. No, it was a chaotic scene, and then it calmed down. And at around 11.30, we were about ready to say, hey, that's it for the news. And all of a sudden, projectiles started being thrown at police, and they fired back, and this is a result of a turn chaotic event two hours later at 11.30. This is the scene tonight with the police sitting right here with the gas masks on at, uh, as we're coming up on 11.45 tonight. But uh, downtown... Definitely not as many people as, as were there before, but the last people missing. Four, five, eight, one more car. The last one stragglers. One. This is four, often when you see uh, the violence start to break out in the late hours of the evening following the closing. And we watched that live. Officer. And at one point, I had said it, it was as though it was a 
They may also have been adjusting their gas masks as they were preparing uh, to, the do, uh, to, to send this off the flash bang with the gas in it, which would make sense because assembly. at that point, that's when we had been seeing the area now uh, where you will be subject to use of force to the rank control agents Some of them could be saying even up ahead, or up above, rather, in the parking garage. So police definitely on the move tonight. You know, for a while we we we, we hadn't seen police. I mean, they, they were keeping back. They were guarding the fence areas, but they were letting them peaceful protest. But once the chaos erupted, the police made their presence known. I can kind of hear Jenny. If you bring the mic up, can can we hear her? I can't. Jenny, can you hear us? Can you guys hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Jenny. Jeff, I can hear you guys. I. Okay, I can hear you guys. I can't hear the producer. We're at Fifth and Yam Hill, and we just saw uh, police. Four. I think we, you guys Thank saw you that four. live. They were uh, throwing a lot of gas this that way alarm, as protesters uh, uh, headed our direction. And I don't know. You might have heard them on the loudspeaker say that pr protesters are throwing projectiles at police. This is an unlawful assembly, and that people need to leave. Uh, I'll vote for clear over the loudspeaker that protesters were throwing projectiles. We didn't see that because we had. Uh, stayed back. back. So they have been throwing Thank water bottles. I appreciate that. Um, at officers tonight, we did witness that. We witnessed them throwing uh, fireworks at one point, and then we also witnessed them uh, throw a glass bottle. But that's not the majority. Sorry, I'll get out of the shot. That's not the majority of people out here. There goes the tactical team. And you know, Jeff, Jennifer, probably what they're going to be doing now. Is going from block to block, intersection to intersection. Uh, okay, he just threw. Oh, he just threw gas. Okay, so that's what they're doing. Three RPs in this building. Uh, the front entrance is completely unsecured. Uh, there's the nobody inside. No damage, but the door is completely unlocked. Uh, mode of operation yeah. since um, you know so every time down. these things get chaotic in the last few days, and all that gas is headed our direction. So we're going to turn around here, um, so we don't get too much of that. But these groups have really splintered me. now. And um, you saw that big one over at uh, Fourth and Salmon at the at the chain link fence there. About uh, 10 minutes ago, the police uh, threw so much gas that it uh, dispersed that group. And now there's a lot more splinter groups. All that gas is headed this direction. Yeah, but right now, Portland police going block by block with their patrol units, their tactical vans, and trying to break protesters up. Um, we did hear of them a few minutes ago on the loudspeaker saying everybody Yo, needs to leave. Protesters are throwing projectiles at them, uh, making that clear to the protesters. This was supposed to be peaceful tonight, and it's just a shame for the folks who wanted it to be peaceful, which were thousands of people. We've been reporting that yesterday. We've been reporting that all afternoon long up until, up until about 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock. Are you guys still with me? Yeah, Jenny, we've been, we've, we've been listening right there. We'll, we'll let you get out of the uh, tear gas for a minute, and uh, we'll come back. Is our uh, Jacqueline Abad is, is her camera steady? Not yet. So if you guys can keep your shot up, if you're if you're in a safe oh, distance away from the tear gas, and look at the amount of stores that we're going around here, just boarded up. Some for safety, some. Oh, really 34 years. Uh, there's the nines. Profile. We all know about the nines. Oh, and look at the nines tonight. Boarded up I'm just trying to as, go. We get, as we as we go around town, everything. I mean, we this ever imagine downtown Portland looking like this? Broken glass. I'm sure. Up the shop. fuck, bitch! Don't and, yell uh, at me. Are you guys did y'all hear this? Nigga? Yes, Jenny. Go ahead. Are you are you out of the tear gas you? range now? Please tell me y'all heard that little. Yes, we're out of the gas. You can see patrols with their lights on, sirens on, get the fuck going out the way. Um, around no, the streets, fuck block to block, letting these people know it's time to go home. It's an unlawful assembly at this point. Like we've been talking about, just splinters of people. You know, we have a group on this uh, at this intersection here at uh, Sixth and Morrison. A group of about eight or ten or so. Excuse me, sorry. And now here coming down, coming down Morrison here. It looks like the tactical van. And they've been known to uh, throw out gas. They're not for the nobody. So might want to stay out of the way. Yeah. The Uh, we, uh, so you just heard an a a this is, I do not need any permission to say 
I don't know who this is. Okay, you know, you were out any gas that time, but a block back. Why are you not watching the tactical that? team? Oh, sure, I'm sure. Just I'm sure. a canister of gas on a block back. Yeah, yeah. Basically, had a bunch of people on it. It's really good. But uh, again, just one group of people here. Not quite ready for a medical test. Can you just call me some of the old Milwaukee and Center? Just for you to acquire that. Jacqueline Abad, she's at another location. Jacqueline, where are you at and what's going on? I feel like they literally dropped me behind the line. I'm situation trying to get a hold of the crowd that is now I'm dispersed positive. um That's you know originally right. this crowd was at over at salmon and fourth where they're kind of ganging up on That's that right. fence you know police were telling them do not tamper with the fence that's when officers used flash bangs um then we saw protesters use fireworks um in the crowds and so now police are trying to c take control of this situation here in downtown portland you can see it's a continuation of police cars driving up and down the streets up here in downtown Portland. And you can see them um, as far as protesters go. You know, there are, we can see that there's some smoke out there, kind of close to Pioneer Courthouse Square, just out front. You know, we've, police have been using tear gas in the area to kind of control the crowds, to kind of disperse the crowds. Um, and the crowds are dispersed here in downtown area. There, um, in the downtown area, there is a lot of people congregating in one spot now. Um, like I said before, Jeff and Jennifer, back to you. All right, take a breath, Jacqueline. Thank know, you for, I know, I know. for reporting on. and showing us what's going on. Uh, but even if there are just some small groups of, say, five or six people who are standing around, we've seen police uh, throw those flashbangs at them and, and see the gas. Um, whether you say they're doing something or not they're out and about and police have said go home this is uh, from earlier in the night this is video you're watching from earlier when things really started to escalate and get out of hand at about 9:15. Um, so there were large uh, protests happening peaceful protests happening all day that started at revolution hall uh, they tend to gather at about six o'clock and then they made their way over the Burnside Bridge several times today, and then violence erupted. And this was an interesting moment when we saw just a, a civilian in a truck who was somewhat teasing those officers. Or he'd pull ahead, and then he'd back up, he'd pull ahead. So they're throwing fire, uh, firecrackers there at police, who then responded, and eventually that truck uh, went away as uh, police started to follow him, but he, he just drove away eventually. Yeah, just another strange part of this evening. Uh, Jenny Young is standing by. Jenny, we can hear you. Go ahead, Jenny. 
Okay, so we're at the corner of 6th and Alder, just a block down from uh, Pioneer Courthouse Square, where police kept just circling the square, uh, throwing out tear gas and smoke. And, you know, I'm not an officer. I'm not riding on those tactical vans. I don't know um, what it's like. But, I mean, we witnessed them throw a, a smoke and a tear gas very close to just individuals, people that weren't in a group, and, and, and like, hit very, very close uh, to the feet of people. Uh, just standing. Um, so again, I mean, I'm not on the van. I'm not throwing out these things. I'm not, you know, riding on the side uh, of a van and, you know, down the street throwing stuff. So I don't know uh, uh, what that's like, but I know it came very close to people, very, very close, who were just standing alone, um, unarmed. But this is really, you know, this is what they do when they're trying to break up these splinter groups, trying to finally drive them out, get them home. They go block by block. They throw gas. They keep their sirens on. They keep their lights on. The pro t the, um, you have the patrol cars, and you have the tactical vans, and the six, the 12 officers on the tact right on the side of the vans, the tactical officers right on the side of the vans, and uh, they go and they observe, and then they throw gas, or they throw smoke, or they throw a flashbang. So that's what they're doing right now. Um, and it's just kind of block by block, you know, on this block right here um, at 6th and Alder. We're not seeing, you know, we're not seeing police. We're just seeing, you know, uh, two or three people in groups. But, you know, go another block over, two or three blocks over, you might see police or wait just a minute here. And police might circle this area. And so police want these people to go home. They declare it unlawful. Zebra George, you know, an John, and a half, 947. Ago, and uh, it'll be uh, you know, Halsey a, a and lot of them uh, did go home. Edgefield. You know, there were thousands out here, and a Halsey lot of them Edgefield, did a leave and go back to probably, I, it looked like they were going back to where they started at 13th and Stark. They were headed back east over the Burnside Bridge. But you have people out here who do not want to go home. They want to stand their ground, and many of them were telling us this is peaceful. And, I mean, m m more than... You know, again, thousands of people, and they wanted this to be peaceful, and that's not how it turned out tonight because of a group of of, uh, of rogue protesters, about a hundred or so, according to Portland police. Before to the clock, but, Messina doing a precinct security. You know, it's really it's too bad that they couldn't pull it off again tonight. The peaceful protest that we saw last night. You, you guys precinct, watched please. it live on the Burnside Bridge. You know, them talking yeah, about well. how after they. Ended the march after it was disbanded. Anybody else that was out causing trouble was not representative of that group. We saw how peaceful it was. We saw how uplifting it was. And then tonight just didn't turn out that way. Portland police were praising their efforts earlier. Before these, I mean, hours ago, Portland police were on Twitter praising the efforts of these protesters, thanking them that, you know, that this was remaining peaceful and that they appreciate their right to protest. Okay, so we're going to wrap it up and send it back over to you guys. Okay, okay. Uh, Jenny Young and, and, and her crew. And uh, you see police being very effective in clearing street by street. Just going around, our crews are capturing all of that. And, um, More MG streets here with Jacqueline Abad. Uh, uh, handle these uh, these massive crowds that have formed. So those four minutes the, uh, to midnight. There is at some point we we kind of just start to follow the stragglers and I bet you I see fireworks. Of course, most of the people. And so you're seeing a lot of empty streets. The reporters walking the streets here. Um, as just some small groups are left, oh, and um, Portland police did there. tweet that a, a trash can was set on fire and had spread to a tree that was at Second and Alder, where Jenny was around that last time we were talking to her. But really, and information I'll give this to uh, EOC also 11 and Taylor in a barber shop west side of Taylor. And things are uh, quieting down. Uh, it's about again, 10 ago now, Taylor saw a couple of juveniles bust the window out. Uh, they left eastbound Taylor and Bicycle. We haven't seen looting. We saw that. We haven't seen the looting. And and red this, band is, band this is a remnant of what we shot yeah. from Friday. Jacqueline Abad standing by with our photographer Matt Rashley. What's your location? What are you seeing, Jacqueline? Go ahead. Um, Fire is still around. Just got off and more is still here. We're actually Otter heading to apartment. Second and Alder. Kind of like zero, zero, Jennifer was saying, uh, Portland Police just tweeted out that on um, a dumpster was set on fire. So we're heading there There's now. There's an SUV on um, fire. There's we continue to see Portland Police it. driving up and down the streets. I'm um, trying to disperse the crowds. From what we've seen, the crowds are pretty dispersed. We haven't seen 
A lot of uh, protesters congregating in one specific area yeah, here in downtown. You. But you can see just off into the distance. Saying. I'm not really sure what um, cross street that is. Um, but a group of Portland police officers kind of blocking the street right there. Um, you can see them continuing to drive up and down the streets. And that's what we've been seeing. Just a, just a line of cars, a police cars going back and forth, back and forth, trying to control these crowds. Trying to get people to um, like we saw earlier. We're clear east and available for every single congregating at um, Salmon and Shore, and, um, and we continue to see Portland police try to get control of the situation down here in downtown. Jeff Jennifer, we're going to continue to head over to uh, Second and Alder um, to see if there's any developments with that dumpster right fire. So we'll send it back to you in the studio. Okay, we'll certainly keep an eye on things, Jacqueline. Abad and our Jenna Young for a fifth night of protests, covering that for us all throughout the downtown Portland area. We certainly thank them and our photojournalists and our security detail who has been with them all since the very beginning. And we thank you for uh, watching us tonight. I know some of these images are hard to watch. These are difficult times we're living in right now. We all have different emotions about it, and that includes us as, as we bring you the news. And uh, we appreciate you watching tonight. Uh, we are going to send it back to network program. Fuck 12. Say that one more time. Fuck 12. Fuck 12, baby. Fuck 12. Right here. Right here. Oh, it is. Yeah. Our city. Y'all are dead. Somebody. Mom. Because I know you'll stay watching. Y'all look at that fucking smoke. Like, from the tear gas and fuck me. Um, right after the presidential election in, uh, in, in 2016, I was right alongside those protesters for several nights, probably walking hundreds of miles, like 100 miles around the city. And uh, there's just that, that tension in the air uh, again this evening after, after such a peaceful night last night. And uh, the police, which, again, let's repeat, is why uh, the wheelers, you know, dropped the curfew. It'll be interesting to see what the mayor does uh, tomorrow after uh, after after the yeah, last several hours here tonight. Like, yeah, absolutely. By like the way, we're not watching the Portland Police Bureau putting yeah. kind of shifts their when messaging tactics and they've been tweeting a lot so. tonight, being um, giving frequent updates on Twitter. And one of them, not long after the tone kind of shifted and the clash kind of happened, Eight, five, seven, uh, one of those tweets included a video Good. from the Bureau's... Five, 10 Northwest 3rd Avenue, male versus female. Uh, it's a passerby. The aggressor is a white gal, 30, thin. to what she said. Topless, black pants, black shoes, and he was yelling at a black guy in a red hoodie. I think uh, somebody looked for her around Burnside earlier somewhere. We do not want peaceful protesters to be subject to riot control agents and the actions of some in the crowd that are creating a public safety risk. Okay. All right, so that was Kevin Police seven. Bureau oh Chief God. that you just heard there, uh, Jamie Rush. A video released yeah. by the Bureau on Twitter. Just basically 904 uh, Northeast Davis calling in. Uh, Suspicious male lurking around the, the, around the neighborhood for several hours. He's been seen wielding a large um, kitchen knife, which he has since put in his coat pocket. An assembly, and uh, uh, he's now dragging trash cans stolen from some neighbors westbound Davis. White guy, 30, black coat with a hood, up, camo shirt. Just been kind of escalating from there. Again, we have our crew. Those are officers in riot gear coming onto Pioneer Square. I think, Mike, they are on the opposite side of the square from where you were. And it looks like you moved a little bit, which I think is a good thing. Yeah, we uh, can you hear me, Maggie? We are on uh, on the opposite end of Pioneer Courthouse Square. There's a bunch up on the steps. If you can see up here, Kenny Mack and push in up by the uh, Starbucks. 
uh, that's now empty. But uh, a number of warnings now, this is an unlawful assembly, they're saying. And now they're trying to clear Pioneer Courthouse Square, uh, which, which had been the scene of, of uh, the, the peaceful demonstrations just several hours ago. And uh, now there are, are people um, back here, I'd, I'd say at least 100 people, maybe, maybe more. Um, and you'll see uh, officers now on the stairs uh, trying, to, trying to push this crowd out of the square. Are they uh, are they giving them warnings to to move out there of the square or just they're just being visible to them right now? They're visible right now, but a couple minutes ago there was uh, a warning saying this is an unlawful no, assembly and they, and they were uh, asking these these folks to leave. Um, the uh, so there has been at least uh, at least here, one warning um, with uh, verbally paint. here in the, the last uh, minute or two. The bread and the circuses are gone. So you're not um, in and all of this left um, is the ravages of the pain, the images of a man no, literally I mean, we're, we're defecating on, on himself as a man had his knee on his neck, draining his life. And so I think that's why. And I think that's why now and, more than uh, ever it's and time for us as Americans to, to tell the full story of how we got of, here uh, and where we are. Uh, might transpire. Uh, to to yeah, you yeah, you see they're uh, lining, uh, 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 lining the street over there perfect in front of First Republic. And you have uh, protesters chanting, whose streets are streets. Can you tell who was honking there? Are there drivers, I assume, who can't get through? Or what was that? Honking the material soon as they just kind of abolish that state holiday. Yeah, behind us, there's, uh, there are a number of drivers. But I, I you know, think just by looking at the people in the car, and uh, I think a lot of them were on the streets uh, with us. So maybe they're heading home, and now they're just kind of stuck in traffic. Um, because a lot of people here are trying to make, uh, yeah, make a left. So there's a long line of cars. And there's some more uh, black things. Around the corner. Confederacy. Uh, yeah, and then you have uh, police now driving uh, northbound on Broadway. Um, Notice a lot of that, they, you know, as they're trying to clear this area and drive up and down these blocks. A lot of the times they're going, you know, uh, against uh, against traffic, but no one's really out here at this hour but police and, and demonstrators. It looks like the demonstrators there in the square are trying to leave. It's really interesting. We're watching from Sky Eight. No, they, no one's. No one's pushing them out yet. So I mean, they are trying to be pushed out, but no one's actually leaving. So, some just we're gonna have the permits off the sidewalk. I think that flashbang came from. So something must be happening a block or two away that that is more pressing than uh, the group gathered here at the square currently. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm Michael watching Sky. Um, and just watching the, uh, the case that you described and you've been describing throughout the night where officers are what? basically following, it looks like, uh, one, two, three people and sort of circling the areas of the on city, 17 trying to find people who have just scattered. Not both going as well. 37-year-old um, male was in a fight earlier. He lost consciousness what that intersection and is, like to report the assault. It's pretty apparent that's near the square. And we have officers parked blocking every single street, an officer parked in the middle of the okay. intersection. Um, sure, and then we have another van with officers all in tactical gear, standing, hanging on to all sides, and cars parked in both directions. I mean, it's just chaotic. And looking ahead... Um, now we have officers coming down Yam Hill and approaching Yam Hill in 6th. Let's see if they take a left and head down 6th. And they are not. They're going to keep going down Yam Hill. Um, so yeah, they're heading east on Yam Hill right, right now. One line of, of police cruisers. Still uh, blocking the sirens. 420557 Northeast Lakeside Drive. Caller sounding possibly paranoid, scrambling about people that may be in his backyard, looking to see them, also is talking about many suspicious cars. He also mentioned a mail that his daughter has an RO again. Remind people of of the sort of dichotomy here that police are struggling to balance, where they are trying to police a protest against police. And the city has been struggling on how to do that, like so many cities around the country are doing. This is not just Portland, where you have people protesting against police violence, um, which disproportionately impacts men of color in our country. And George Floyd's death is representative of, of too, too many deaths, and these protesters are out, and police departments across the country, including Portland's bureau, 
Um, of course. Seemingly letting people they try to run demonstrate. It's a fucking crime. Uh, and then if and when run we while do they see, do that. we have reports tonight that this is what happened. Yeah, this is from the bureau saying that people have been yeah. throwing things at police, that they start pushing back yeah. against fencing that's set up to protect uh, the justice center. That's when police yeah. push back. And then it does create uh, a conflict between these two sides, which in a lot of people's what? minds, you know, from well, what we've heard from people doesn't actually want to report anything, protests, so you can be any of you like. Of the they arrested the CNN? Of protests, where people I didn't know CNN was there. Right. So okay, this, every too. time it's we've seen true. this escalate, these protests yeah, escalate so. from a peaceful demonstration to uh, where things get chaotic, there's so much behind that, and there is so much anger and rage across the country. And every day afterward, we've no. heard the mayor, we are the police in a, chief, uh, city in Portland, which has been convulsed by a mob riot. The police are rioting through the city, picking up random people, gassing them, nading them, and, how rapidly and arresting them. It can spin out of control. Even if they go to the Anonymous caller reporting a hearing a child screaming somewhere in this complex. Yeah, if you guys might be near the playground and can hear an adult voice yelling. Well, they could not see anything for our description. Okay. All right. Yeah. Is this your first time out here? I'm glad you did. It's important to be out here. It's important to keep doing this. You get used to it. Hello, friends. Yeah. Just enjoying the bugaloo. Five plus six, three checking status. We don't have the worst of the 50 states that are oh, currently sweet. protesting. Oh, sweet. Two coming. Never mind. I don't get to sit down and smoke a cigarette. Oh, yeah. Six three, I code, code four. I just cleared. Fuck it. I'm gonna sit down and light one anyways. Just really tear gas me while I'm fucking smoking, light a cigarette. <laughs> But Elaine's got it now. This whole stream will be saved, so this will all be up for people to, to watch later. Don't worry, folks. Hey! Oh, thank you! Thank you! Beautiful. Fuck police! We are rolling away. I'm not sure what else is going on tonight. Uh, other than cops hunting people. But, um, yeah, we're going to, um, we're going to keep going for a while until we're out of the danger zone, just so that there's folks watching in case we wind up having an encounter with the police. Living in the United States with our police is a little bit like... 9804, that's suspicious to be broadcast. Thank you. Information only. Uh, 2124 Southwest Iowa. A couple of suspicious males in a silver super Outback uh, parked there. They've been kind of wandering around trying door handles. Possibly high. Might be white males. One with a white hoodie, one with a gray hoodie. That's going to be information at 414.
Three and Michael Seven Three Southwest Halsey Loop and Halsey Street. OSP is requesting Code Three Cover. They're out with a Fifty Seven Green Two Thousand Eighteen Subaru Outback Plate. Adam Lincoln Ida One One Zero. Copy. Seven Three Copy. Sergeant, copy the call. Seven Nine Nine. Yes. We're gonna wait for you. And non-emergency. Yeah. yeah. That's a good idea. Yeah, we're having to hold up our press passes. Five flight four repeat. Yeah, we're doing this whenever the cops come. I'm gonna divert for the OSP stop. So they don't fuck us up. Occupied times two. They're out of the vehicle now, and they're saying we can you slow know, to code uh, one. I saw a lot of like the Hong Kong stuff working tonight. The, um, Copy. The, the traffic cones placed over gas. I helped out at a couple of points, and eventually they dropped so much gas. Uh, the crowd was doing a really good job of reforming. There were I suspect that they uh, activists through the crowd. Come around this, this way. If they go in front of the justice center, it'll get run. fucking ugly because if people throw stuff in front of the justice center, all of that helped. Have seen and in general, just like the morale people built up over the last, if we're just doing this, really helped keep large groups. Yeah, but it's great. There's new people every night. Flight the most four, all three is an eight eight three advising. We just saw people getting gassed. A lot of people saying, like, I got gassed and so I came back out. Yeah. Yeah, where, where do you need to go back to? 84. I'm just going to have you and I'll pull 583 to go to Southwest 257 and 26. Uh, caller reporting 15 ago, subject walking southbound in the middle of the traffic lane. Uh, made eye contact with our caller. He's a black male, gray hoodie, dark sweatpants. Where do you need to get back to? So we had any others? Hold by the Five flight three, I'll be back in your Okay, we'll cross the bridge together. We'll wait until the Ubers come and we'll all can do whatever you're able to. If anybody can't, doesn't have to okay. scratch, I'll get you an Uber. Pedestrian in traffic, if there's no other calls, that can be information. Five poly four twenty. Thank you. Ninety eight oh four. Ninety eight oh four. We have a status on those uh, 5900 cars that are on that alarm. Sure. Uh, 5910, you code for there. Yeah. 5911, you clear a calls on one. Over there. The most illegal thing I've done tonight. Oh, thank you. Uh, those are fine. Yeah. Uh, nobody like. We'll, I'll keep playing as long as people are forming up into group. But we're at this point. We're just seeing kind of gangs of cops assaulting small and bewildered groups of individuals on the street and arresting them. And, uh, I don't know. It's been a long enough night for 59, me. 59, you can clear a storage. And one three coming. It's double zero eighteen. Nothing is safe. No one is safe. Thank you for all Thank of the offers of rides on the stream. I think we'll be okay. We'll figure out our way. We seem to be out of where most of the police rioting is occurring. So I think it'll be a pretty uneventful walk. Huh. Oh, this way? I don't know which way we are. Oh, sure. Yeah, you know the way of it. I, I'm as 
well acquainted with Portland folks as I'm ever going to get. I, I, I've never, I'm horrible at directions. I never know where I am. Oh, good. Cops drove through protesters by the fence. Now, we saw that on Sunday night, too. Uh, is reporting on that now. Yeah, and so that now that's also the local liberal news Thank is you, recognizing, watching, oh, you. no, cops ran people too. with cars. Well, they so did it on Sunday, too. Right, Candy? I can't wait till I see fireworks. <laughs> what? 1997. That's how long it's been. Uh, just was. They do not give a fuck at this point. I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. They must have been outside I also of their want homes, to be known to everyone that yeah, I don't know. this cause is so important to me that instead of being comfortable at my own home in my own bed, you know, I don't know what I'm out here like. sitting in the what square protesting. Everyone watching, I've been saying it all night to strangers and to you guys and in a lot of my videos, I do love you. Tear gas or something over there. Go run! 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 Is this keep getting, going to keep getting bigger every day? Because today's the first day that there are protests in all 50 U.S. states. So it's going consistently. Since it all started exactly a week ago, really. Um, so Minneapolis. One five eight. Protesting over uh, the death of One five eight. For you in one six nine North Russian School one zero zero one Southeast two one seven. Callers hearing what about five ago heard screams from the school, possibly from the two one four side. Get him, get him, there you go. Get him. 118, I'm George on the truck in mine. I'll have that way and take 169 spot. 169. The memory of George Floyd and uh, people that are trying to take advantage of it for their own uh, financial gain, well, that's not a cause. Sheriff, if you, if you can hold on the line here for one second, we want to tell our viewers that we are continuing our coverage of breaking news and keeping a, a, a very close eye on two peaceful protests, one in Hollywood, the other in downtown Los Angeles, again, over the death of George Floyd. And, and Sheriff, and while we have you here, I, I want to ask you, there's been some interaction with your deputies and some of these protesters here. Oh, what are they coming back? I can go ahead and take that call off. 3106, we Nine, I'll have you cover the sergeant for Northwest Division and Birdsdale. Two blocks north of Fall River's five shot. Or something. I don't know if a window is actually smashed in. You see alarms going off. No one in this circle is being a troublemaker. Yeah, I don't see any broken cool. glass. I love all of you. I love all of you. I love all of you. Pike and Harvard, we're going to. Maybe take a right or take another couple blocks down, just depending on what's going on. We do have to get to the other side of uh, where the police are kind of going down on Pine.
like there's a bunch of officers down that direction. Oh, there's a bunch of people running now. Ellie, do you want to um, hang out for a minute and let them pass further down? If they do. George Ford. George Okay, well, let's cross the road here. Sorry. Trying not to get arrested right now. My name is Randall McCorkle. I will stand for those who've been oppressed before me. This is my house. Dieting is 80%. I own this home. Down chasing the crowd. Wait for the Our house. cars on the other side. Multiple, multiple waves of them. We've got police officers there. Hopefully they don't fucking arrest us. No, there's a big military, like, convoy. <sighs> Should we just, um... Funny team, I'm not seeing or hearing anything on the 214 side. 118, copy. Double zero twenty-five. Oh, they've got the other side blocked off. Yeah, so we're in a... And 118, to clarify, it sounds like the caller actually lives on the 214 side, so they heard the screams from somewhere from the school. Circling around that way. Another report of shots at the Stark Street Crossing Department, 20433 Southeast Stark. Uh, about six to seven shots there. Would you like me to send more units to area check there, or do you think they're related? No, I'll head down that way. Also, there's nothing around here. I just spoke to a person that was out walking around. He said he didn't hear anything. Five eight clear this door. I'll head over. One eighteen is well placed. One eighteen double twenty seven. Lacey, I'm watching this. I'm doing my best to keep this live. So, mobile park 21100 Northeast Sandy Boulevard, Unit 146. I'm not turning this Someone's off. outside I'm rattling not. our caller's door. Hasn't seen him to give a description. Just getting to a little safer ground. Okay. Oh, please, please, They just tear gas the fucking piece. Five poly three and so forth. Five poly three. Boogaloo in the square! I 
there's only four. Eight four. Some OSA info for Unit 104. Uh, there's a resident there, Orion, born in 1941, that's so annoyed and owns lots of firearms. Uh, to approach with caution. Uh, we're going to do that. Thank you. They just tear gas the shit out of the square, it sounded like. Oh, okay. Fireworks! This is the form of police zero. Three, three, double zero, three, one. 3106. Everybody watching. Another caller, kind of go, heard five shots at Southeast 202 and Stark. Saw five males running into the new apartments at 201 in Stark. Uh, it says one of the involved males is the father of her children, and his name is Irvin Herring, born in 92. Okay, I'm 23. Okay, I'm 23 there, too. Okay, that's true. And at 18, I was just flagged out by a house on 205 saying they... Also believe they heard gunshots in that direction. I'm getting flagged down over at Waverly Gardens. It doesn't happen, it well, certainly doesn't happen overnight, Southeast Division but there 24. has to be some... It started out as a cold harassment. Our caller was receiving harassing phone calls from known subjects saying they were going to come by and shoot up her house. Uh, our caller just called back and said there's people at the location that arrived in a dark blue Acura CL and a black Benz. Yeah, cool. You gotta get out of here. I really gotta get out of here. Okay. 0034.
724. 724. Two fire sergeants this way. Can we get a sergeant? 1204 Southeast Center. Uh, and now we just have an open line for the disturbance. Copy. Double zero three five. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You guys all right? Okay. Stay safe. Uh, 5900 uh, cars. Can I get two uh, to the Greenview apartment, 3504 Southwest Beaverton Hillsdale Highway for a disturbance? Three, we can send uh, 13 and 14. Okay, 5913, 5914. Uh, it is 3504 Southwest Beaverton Hillsdale Highway, Greenview Apartments. They're individually numbered. Uh, the neighbor tried to hit a uh, college roommate with a hammer, then destroyed the screen door. Uh, might have some mental health issues, but we're not sure yet. Guy with the hammer's outside watching uh, the complainant's apartment from across the parking lot. Pretty unreadable. Walking on the sidewalk on start for us. We're far enough to find you. I think we may have had calls on that. Uh, 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 the that guy should be able to watch the area probably near your last layer two nights ago. Okay, I'll, lo I'll look at the recent calls there. One six nine to advise. Kyle, let's go. Oh yeah, with Mr. Harry. Where are you at? The original call is Star Street Crossing Farms. The entrance on Star. Copy. I'm arriving. One six nine. And one six eight double zero three seven. Start street crossing apartment entrance. Mail. They arrive with the intent to fight and threw something at the car. Copy. Double zero thirty seven. Back to Pioneer. Back to Pioneer. Take the square again. 717. Go ahead. Going with medical, possible overdose, Southeast 3 4 in Hawthorne. Uh, our caller uh, came across this person who was overdosing. This Have a needle next to him. Just keeps getting more fucking sick. That was our 30. And I'm from 4, it looks like both vehicles took off eastbound division, possibly headed towards 175 and Stark. Copy. Go 039.
6,900 cars that are going. Uh, the caller and roommate are safe inside their own apartment now. Uh, the uh, not sure which unit Tim, number the I other guy lives in, I tried to do that uh, but he's still actually he outside. And uh, he's a I name is live, Matt. If you could come out tomorrow, white guy, fifties, white t-shirt, tan shorts, and it actually really had a crowbar, not a hammer. All way for you, put this John, and I'll go with her. Zero party. I'm coming from the Rockwood office. I got me. I'm in 210 and Sandy. Nine nine four, you can plug in three five seven for Union Boy. Nine nine four, I copy the plate. Double zero forty two. It smells like burnt rubber so bad after all those street bikes. I came back. Eighty-five of the other cars are like still en route or the empty. Yeah, fifty-nine oh three, I think we're just pulling in right now. Okay, we're a couple minutes out. Okay, so I stopped and took a break for a second because it was really eventful there for a few minutes. My mask and goggles have been fogged up for a minute. I'm so, so thirsty and tired. But I'm not done yet.
I'm going to step back from the action for a few minutes because it's died down quite a bit. I'll hear if it starts happening at the square again. I'm two blocks away. But I'm safe. I love you guys. I'm going to keep bringing it on. I'll be back tomorrow. I'm going to stick around here tonight until it's done or really slow. Um, but yeah, just give me a few minutes to catch my breath. I really would like to just chill for a minute. Thank you, I love you. Don't put me in the next few minutes. that you'll see around the West Shore apartments, uh, callers saw a guy spray paint and tag the King Solomon and then tag the, tag the parking garage. He lives in a tent nearby there at 3 and 5. Those are pretty fun. And also information on an alarm I gave to the EOC. Kassoff Jewelers, 529 Southwest Broadway, it's a cla uh, glass break activation. Still 046. You little pussy ass bitch! Stay standing there if you're a fucking gangster! 84 and 23 is a clear with your division for your. Five flight four is a clear with 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 Okay guys, so shit. my phone's gonna die. They waving them through. Uh, they but there's someone else live streaming this. Uh, oh, you, how do you spell that? Oh, yeah. I need a fork. Uh, if we have somebody. Yeah. 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 Seven, thank you. That glass break uh, alarm downtown needs to be given to the UFC. And it can go away. Oh, yeah, it gave it to them, yes. It goes over for you. And do you just want me to info out the welfare check? He's not doing anything but standing there. Which welfare check? Uh, Southeast 11 and Mill. Stand by, Lily. Four. Two, yes. Third Fucking rock. Oh, okay, thank you. Come on. Okay, go for it. Seven three seven, can you call on that assault to call back tomorrow? Seven three seven, copy. Just information, Southeast 11 and Mill. Uh, caller worried about a male who's standing on the corner for the past 30 minutes. He might be high, but he's not doing anything. Black jacket over gray hoodie. I'm oh, sorry, white guy, early 20s. Black jacket, gray hoodie, khaki pants. Still there for me. Very interesting, I come in
3106 or 158, checking status at Archibald Grove. Uh, uh, is that what they're gonna 3106, we're cut for. Happy to go for 169, checking status at Stark Street Crossing. We're cut for. Good for Because they're gonna try to stay tomorrow. Everybody in the whole world is protesting, including, including white ass Gary Town, Boise, Idaho. Gary Town, Boise, Idaho supports Negroes. Oh shit. Elliot, that would be oh, great, God actually. Damn. I am not always able to look to at the, the screen like when we're no. on the move and when we're out around the large house. Feel bad for the people at that bureau shop. I had a corn dog there the other night. And the guy is super nice. Support your local businesses. They had corn dogs and sodas and euros. Uh, that wasn't the place I ate last night. That was I had them two nights ago.
Uh, it's been kind of cheap. I just had a couple of corn dogs, but I just gotta let it burn. Two 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 six. Um, Someone send marshmallows. Two 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 six on Iowa. We'll be talking to people at uh, E122. E Edward 122, the corner there is yelling and being an ass I don't know if he's yelling at the police because I can't see through this building and there's also a fire right down there that's roughly first and Morrison between first and second and Morrison No police, no fire department, just letting it burn. Please Southwest 3 in Washington, security Please calling in send four or five people fighting. Meanies. They don't know about any it's weapons, they have no description, and they aren't sticking around. So it's First and Morrison. Thought I heard something over here. I'll walk over here. Someone tell me my car's pretty. I was trying to eat a cheeseburger, but. Central 1045. Uh, you're welcome, Carissa. I'm trying to do the best I can. I'm not a journalist. And so I'm just doing as much as I can, trying to keep you guys in the action. Excuse me. If my camera sucks, like I said, I've been out here since six. It's one. I've been here seven hours today. It is currently my birthday. Part of the manager. Report to the number. Part of the ninety-one. Yeah, we arrived at that Jackson twenty-four fifty one twenty-two. That girl's gone. You cleared out. Did you happen to make contact with the employee there? They want not to really talk asking about people that, for but anything, but if you want to, yep, we're talking to. Donate me a few Probably. dollars for my parking okay. or some Gatorades. I won't say no. I'm not trying to like make a buck on this or any of that. I want to get our voices heard and I want to show it to you guys. Thank you, Stevie. Top priority. 
authority. So we're taking extra precautions for your protection. In our stores, Florida everyone is encouraged world. Thank to you. practice social distancing. Be back All tomorrow. colleagues are wearing masks. Hand sanitizer is available for everyone. And we've increased cleaning and hygiene. Thank you, Catalina. I've seen you watching for quite a while. Thank you. Someone was saying I need my information if I want donations. Um, I will try to figure that out. Cover that. Uh, I'm really in fight near there for Washington. you cover that? Like, I really came into this pretty unprepared. And, uh... If you want to just roll by and hit that so I didn't know I was going to need to set up a cash yeah, app or Vimo or, or just whatever. Sure There's kick routes. Um, and then maybe you could have brought it on the side as well. 5915. Can you show the 5900 park closest? 5913. Oh, uh, they finally brought in the fire department. I put out the fire. Give me a second to zoom in. That fool is standing next to it, arms open. Hold on, god damn it. What? Yeah, the fire department just got to this fire, and that guy is going over and standing protecting his fire now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I've been keeping my car locked and Fire coming back as needed. And well, I'm really glad that's not my car. Sorry if I got you on my Facebook Live. I'm going to double check mine now. But I've seen a lot of what look like government vehicles in here. I've been parking here for a couple of days. Oh yeah, no, my window's broken. Fuck. Yup. Alright guys, well, that whole cash app situation just got a whole lot more real. My fucking window's broken. That's fucking tight. Fuck. Oh well, I got good insurance. I'll call them in the morning. Happy birthday to me, right? What? I got, I do, I got some, but I'm, I'm trying to set it up so I can drive home eventually. I was thinking about checking out what's in the back of this. Nah, I'm, I'm not here to steal from people. Damn, I can't believe someone fucking smacked my window. Thank you. Huh, they raided my shit. Information, reckless driver, last seen westbound Burnside from 136, yeah, about one ago. The subject on a Harley release. motorcycle was driving erratically, high rate of speed, information, 104. Damn, y'all. What? Yeah. They didn't even steal. Oh, I didn't have much worse stealing in there. Honestly, the. Someone let. This. Whatever this sleeping bag thing is. Is not mine. I didn't really have anything super valuable. Like, if they were smart, they would pop the trunk and I have fucking liquor in here. 
Like, this would have been their biggest boost. They didn't touch that. This is still full. Do you want, do you want a beer? Uh, they're actually not even beers. They're coveted white cloth. I'm not sure. I've got, I've got coffee. Uh, That's fine. And, you know, Stranger Danger, right? No, it's not that. Oh, I, don't, I think that white cloth, isn't that like, like a... That's, yeah, it's a seltzer beer, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people don't like them. Did I've you never want that weirdo thing? Let me double check that it's not mine. <laughs> but no, nah, I don't want some of this shit. And like they didn't even steal it. Doesn't look like they even stole anything. Dude, when I walked up, I was like, it looked like they fucking um they they broke my mom. Just a uh yeah. Damn, y'all. I know. I smashed my window. I, but to be fair, this is a really nice Cadillac, so you can assume maybe I'm a government, you know. I have a friend, a step dad like father figure right and he wanted to come to me he's like but i'm not coming down there. i look like a fucking cop like, fucking eat my ass and i'm like you know that looks like I ran from brushing at 14 and quarters. I just got this call. 13 and 14, copy that. Most people say, don't be going to spend your money. Brush 14, Lincoln Medical, I'm going to there. Uh, Affirmative, there was a small fire. The fire, was there a fight? Like a fist fight? Negative, there was a no fight that we saw. Alright, well, I'm not going to go back out now since someone broke the fucking window. Alright, well, I'm not going to go back out now since someone broke the fucking window. Well, I hope you're going to have a good rest of your birthday. He didn't take a full pack of cigarettes. Yes. <laughs> didn't take a full brand new jewel pod. Where the thing I'm not seeing here is I had a second ID, second driver's license, and an insurance card. I'm not seeing the driver's license or insurance card. I'm over 41. Semi regular with some of the fucking. Maybe I'll find it. Still haven't completely finished looking. Damn, that's a bummer. So Lacey, there's there's my my window. Thank you, Philip. Matt, uh, I'm sitting at my car right now. Pulling glass out of my seat, looking, seeing what, if anything, they stole. But, like, worst fucking thieves ever. They left two full packs of cigarettes, a full Sprite. They just wanted to break my window. They left my fucking FM receiver, my COVID masks. Spilled my Dr. Pepper all over my floor, sons of bitches.
Engine 24, Medic 329, SCA 1, 1521 North Alberta Street, Matt Pages 194 Adam, talk group box 1. That's for Engine 24, Medic 329, SCH 1, 1521 North Alberta Street, Matt Page is 5194 Adam, talk group box 1, timeout 109. Damn, I thought it was kind of weird when I seen a, a rag and a charger right there. <sighs> Fuck my life. Information 105060 Burnside Street. No, I like being close to the action, uh, Matt. Driver. Um, this gives me the opportunity, if I want, need to, to, to come back to my car and change, cab, get more water, and and white all that truck. stuff. Information from Fuck. Lane 11. Lane 8. Southeast 4 in Division. There's a male subject in the gutter by the bus stop. Not checked. Cool. It's okay. going to be a cold ride home, I guess. One twelve. Thank you, Matt. Let's do it. This is such bullshit, guys. It's all right. It's what insurance is for.
t Okay, thank you. Those are one fifty. And the other All right, all the uh, action is over. I'm gonna end this live stream tonight because I wanna go home and get some rest and figure out all this shit. Oh, fuck. Truck 25, Medic 323, no, on a VR1, 5801, Snap Street. I wanna go Snap home, catch my breath. Gotta wake up early and call the insurance on a VR1 at 5801, Southeast Snap Street. I'm tired. And it's my birthday. It's not how I planned on spending it. Thank you, Kayla. I'm uh, ending it now. Thank you guys so much for all watching. Please, if you get a chance, tune in again tomorrow. I will be live again tomorrow. Don't think a broken window will. I'm sorry, Kayla. I promise I will be back tomorrow. Yeah, Kayla, so just since you're just tuning in, I just got back to my car after seven hours of protest to a broken window on my new-to-me car. It's a fucking sweet Cadillac. Kayla, feel free to add me. and many who were present on the day of the attack remain missing. But a year after the attack, some have criticized the committee and say the investigations are slow and justice is being delayed. When we took to the streets in December 2018, we demanded freedom, peace and justice. Sudan can't go forward without peace and freedom, but more importantly, it can't go forward without justice. Back in the room that was once Abbas's, his sister says the government needs to remember the price paid by many to bring it to power. 
The government came to power through blood. People sacrificed their lives and now there's no justice that has been delivered. The people on the streets haven't forgotten what it took and won't move on without that justice and accountability. Accountability that one year on since the attack remains elusive for families who've lost their loved ones. People Morgan Al Jazeera, Khartoum. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson says the UK could offer millions of people in Hong Kong a route to citizenship if China imposes a controversial national security law. That says another bill banning insults against the Chinese national anthem had its third reading in the Legislative Council. It's one of a series of bills seen as an escalation of Beijing's control over the territory. Critics say the proposed laws could be used to silence dissent. A group of pro-democracy activists are calling for a global alliance against the law. They say it goes against the one country, two systems framework, which promises Hong Kong extra freedoms. Activist Joshua Wong says seven European nations and the EU have already spoken out against the bill, but more support is needed. We still are aware around 15 countries in Europe still have not openly showed their stand on the national security legislation. So we encourage more Hong Kongers to join this global petition and to wish more European leaders could stand with Hong Kong. When Hong Kong is already under threat and time is running out in this global city. Well, China's foreign ministry has spoken out against what it says is foreign influence over Hong Kong, calling it a threat to the city's stability and prosperity. A spokesman criticized comments by British Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab, who on Tuesday urged Beijing to reconsider the security law. The coronavirus crisis now, and there are now more than a million cases of COVID-19 across Latin America. Brazil, Peru and Chile have been the worst hit. And now many countries are taking a second look at their official death toll, which health experts say have been underreported. Our Latin America editor Lucia Newman reports from Santiago. In Chile's capital, soldiers in armored cars guard the trucks, while boxes of food and cleaning products are delivered directly to people's homes to ensure they can remain indoors. Two of us at home lost our jobs two months ago, so this is a big help. It's the first we've received from the government since the pandemic started. After 76 days of partial or total lockdown, hospitals are close to collapsing. COVID-19 infections and deaths keep rising, in part because it's been impossible to enforce confinement. These food boxes you know, are certainly the, welcome, but they're like, not enough to pay for the rent or even cooking gas. And other government emergency aid, aid has been slow in coming. And so no amount of pleading or even threats like of fines has been enough to keep many people at home and from not going out to work, especially in low-income neighborhoods like this one, where the infection rate is highest. In neighboring Peru, nearly three months of lockdown hasn't prevented an explosion of infections. The country already has the highest death toll in South America after Brazil. I've lost two brothers in a month, but I'm glad they're not suffering anymore because of the pain they had. Now, a new report that compares statistical data over the last three years suggests that the number of COVID-related deaths in April and May could, in fact, be more than 17,000, half times higher than the health ministry figures. I asked the man who published the study how this was possible. Okay, copy that. We concur. Many people who died at home or on the way to the hospital or even at the door of the hospital. Yes, we do copy. We'll go ahead and just ban. Thank you. Others had respiratory failure as the cause of death, even though this okay, was caused by yeah, coronavirus. Sure Pass it along to your crew. Regardless of w. how the death toll is tallied, Latin America is now the epicenter of the pandemic. And yet, it's not all gloom. From In Havana, a young opera singer lifts the spirits of health workers yeah, from your and position the field, What are your thoughts on uh, keeping fire branch staffed? While thousands oh, of kilometers okay. away, yeah, Chile has applauded the arrival of a box that will also make down. all Thank this you. a little bit easier to bear. Okay, so cover that. Uh, we'll move forward Santiago. Now in the U.S., COVID-19 is tonight. disproportionately killing African Americans. To make matters you, worse, for, uh, testing for the virus is scarce in poor, largely minority neighborhoods. But one doctor in New Jersey is addressing that issue. Gabriel Elizondo went to meet him. 
trying to stop the spread of coronavirus, not from a hospital, but from the back of a van. It's the idea of Dr. Alexander Salerno, who is offering mobile testing for COVID-19 infections, as well as antibodies. Do you take any medication? Salerno, who's run a family health clinic for 30 years, was dismayed by the inaction of authorities and the near non-existent testing in poor communities hit hardest by the virus. He took matters into his own hands and spent more than $40,000 to set up a pop-up clinic. His team tests more than 100 people a day in economically depressed neighborhoods of New Jersey. What initially gave me the idea it was really ice cream trucks and food vending trucks. Um, because, you know, in urban areas, uh, ice cream trucks, food vending trucks are very much part of summertime. And so we came up with the idea of let's do a mobile COVID testing van. Obviously, the other is that not everyone could get to a doctor's office. And they really shouldn't be going to emergency rooms and hospitals for testing because that really, you know, created a major backlog. So it's kind of like bring the testing to the people. This is a high rise apartment of senior housing. Everybody that lives here is elderly and particularly vulnerable to COVID-19. Many don't have the ability to go very far to get tested, and now they don't have to. They just walk out their front door to Dr. Salerno's van, get their tests done, and the results come back within 48 hours. And he turns nobody away, even if they can't afford to pay. Vernus Holmes was trying to get tested way back in March, but the nearest site was an hour away in a wealthy community, and he could never get an appointment. Oh man, I've been waiting two and a half months. The first site was in Bergen County, and we from Essex County, and we couldn't go over there to get tested. I had to wait till they came over here closer, because I'm here in East Orange. Proving all it takes to get tests for people who need it the most is a place to park. Gabriel Zondo, Al Jazeera, East Orange, New Jersey. As coronavirus restrictions start easing, many countries are looking abroad to understand different responses to the pandemic. While some shut down immediately, others had a more relaxed approach. Now, mayors okay. from 40 cities are sharing their experiences as Rob McBride reports from Seoul. City Hall in Seoul, linking live to the major cities of the world in an unprecedented response to the global pandemic. Seoul's mayor inviting his fellow mayors to prepare for a world changed forever. Post coronavirus is a totally different world. We will face nearly completely new world. So we should make more effort to change everything. From his office, Park Won Soon has led the city's response to the outbreak, just as he oversaw the fight against the deadly MERS epidemic five years ago. I think cooperation and solidarity is the most important in overcoming this disease. So Seoul decided to share all our information and wisdom which were acquired through the years of uh, MERS and this COVID-19. As soon as COVID-19 was first detected in South Korea in January, Seoul adopted a double strategy of transparency, being completely open about the scale of the threat, Mm -hmm. combined with a rapid response. Seoul has an active monitoring system to respond to outbreaks of disease from overseas, effectively uh, looking for threats even before there is one. So when COVID-19 came along, the city was ready. Mass disinfection of public transport and spaces, distribution of masks to the most vulnerable and imposition of social distancing, mass testing and tracing, a system that has been able to contain subsequent clusters of new infections. Seoul's message is that the world should emerge from this wiser environmentally and with a greater respect for the natural forces around us. In terms of uh, pandem- pandemic issues, uh, you know, we have very disadvantages because uh, we are densely living. But at the same time, the urban cities have the advantage of new innovations. With cities now home to half the world's population and growing, it seems people will have to take on board the lessons learned from this pandemic before facing the next. Rob McBride, Al Jazeera, Seoul.
And as always, much more news on our website at aljazeera.com. The very latest on there on the protests in the United States as well as the coronavirus pandemic, of course, aljazeera.com. Hello again, I'm Foli Batibo with the headlines on Al Jazeera. There have been fewer reports of looting and violence in the United States as curfews remain in effect across many cities. In Portland, Oregon, demonstrators lay face down for nine minutes on a busy road in remembrance of George Floyd. The mother of Floyd's daughter has held an emotional news conference calling for justice. Roxy Washington says Floyd was a good man and that all four officers at the scene should be charged. He will never see her grow up, graduate. He will never walk her down the aisle. <clears throat> if it's a problem she's having and she needs her dad, she does not have that anymore. <clears throat> I'm here for my baby. And I'm here for George because I want justice for him. Well, the protest movement in the U.S. is seeing solidarity online. A montage of black images has been posted on social media sites under, under the hashtag Blackout Tuesday. The concept spread from the music industry with some major companies pledging to suspend business. But there's been criticism with calls for anti-racism material to be shared instead of the brief silence. People in Israel are also showing solidarity. In Tel Aviv, hundreds showed up at the U.S. Embassy's branch office. Some said they wanted to end racial discrimination in their own country. Palestinians have joined in the movement as well and have drawn attention to what they say is the aggression. Okay. We'll be out of the Protesters in the occupied West Bank gathered outside the Church well, of the Nativity, the lighting candles for George uh, Floyd. In other news, an Iranian scientist who was released from a U.S. prison has arrived home. Siro Saskari was acquitted on charges of stealing state secrets in November, but was held over an expired visa. The U.S. and Iran have denied that he's part of a prisoner swap. Britain says the U.K. could offer millions of people in Hong Kong a route to citizenship if China imposes a controversial national security law. That says another bill banning insults against the Chinese national anthem has its third reading in the Legislative Council. You're up to date with the headlines on Al Jazeera. I'll have more news for you right after the stream. Talk to Al Jazeera. Call lady for a in 133. Let me ask you how worried you are about the increase in hostilities in Yemen. This is the moment to stop all military action. This is the moment to concentrate on fighting COVID-19. We meet with global newsmakers and talk about the stories that matter on Al Jazeera. Very okay, you're watching the stream. This weekend across the United States, there were protests against police brutality. Black was for for two. We're good for him. He's just peacefully protesting. Happy code for one very thing. Matthew Forbes confirmed with curfew tonight. The way how they treated George Floyd on the streets, man, is definitely one of the most brutal, one of the most inhuman things I've seen Negative. on this Coffee, planet. Thanks. For him to be an unarmed man, an unarmed black man, a minority man of color, and for him to be attacked by the police, for him to be strained on the police for nine minutes, for him to have his neck, have the whole knee on his neck, it is definitely not something human. <laughs> That New York protester was talking about the killing of George Floyd, an African-American, in police custody. Now, could this moment be a moment and a turning point for U.S. race relations? That is what we're talking about today. If you're on YouTube, jump into the chat and you too can be part of this conversation on the stream. I will introduce the guests. They will introduce themselves. Keisha, tell our audience who you are. I'm Keisha Blaine. I'm currently an associate professor of history at the University of Pittsburgh. I study 20th century U.S. history, African-American history, African diaspora history, and women's and gender studies. 
Right, she's going to bring some historical context to this conversation. Welcome, Keisha. Hello, Philippe. Tell our audience who you are. 71 Medic 332 on a TR3. Hello, I'm Miss Philippe Cunningham, and I am a Minneapolis City Council Ferris member. Wood Apartment at, Ford, at 555 Northwest Ferris. Ferris Road, number 104. Good to have you on board. Matt Pages, 6405. David Chuck Group, this box one for Truck 71 and Medic 332 on a TR3 at Ferris Wood Apartment at 555 Northwest Ferris Road, number 104. Matt Root is 5405. David Tuck Root is up one. Straight away, it's one. From Africans Unite. They knew we were going to have this conversation. This is their reaction. Really cried when I saw the video of this policeman with his knee on George's neck till George died. I pray that this will be the last time we ever hear of a quick. senseless police killing of an unarmed African in the U.S. I have my doubts. Slavery and capitalism are two sides of the coin. So. Africans Unite is already beginning to think that this may be a moment in U.S. race relations, Damon. Um, I, I think that that, <laughs> that is a very optimistic uh, way of viewing things. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we, we've seen what happened with access? George Floyd, with, with Trayvon, with Mike Brown, we have an with Sandra for Bland, this building? with uh, Philandro uh, Castillo. Let me I try mean, try it, the list goes on. I could, we could, I could spend here, I could be here for the next half hour just naming names. And, and I felt like each time, okay, this is it. This is the time when things are going to change. This is the time uh, that's going to we'll be call back the critical in mass the, of attention and, and activism and outrage. It's okay, I'll call. And we'll okay. see. But I am not, if I were a betting man, I wouldn't place any bets, place any money on this being the thing that changes everything. Damon, you mentioned some very famous African-Americans who died in brutal circumstances, uh, we put together some of those images so people can remember. This is this is not an unusual circumstance. It should be, but it is not. Philippe, when when I shared that tweet about, is this the last time I will ever see this? I cried. You slightly rolled your eyes. Articulate that eye roll. Or David Nyman, obviously. Yes, um, I would just say that Anyone clear? navigating in this world as I'm, I'm black and transgender, I want navigate the world, folks see me as a black man. Um, I don't believe that there will be any sort of real radical change around police and re the relationship with the black community. Um, I do not believe at this point really that uh, an evidence shows that reforms in the police department actually change police culture. Um, and also really here in the United States, we really don't have a paradigm of what does it look like to actually not live in a racist capitalist society. We don't have that paradigm right now. And so not having that makes it very challenging for me to believe that we have the ability to move to something that looks like that. Mm -hmm. Keisha. I agree. I certainly want to be optimistic. I think we should keep fighting and we should keep demanding changes. But, but I do agree uh, with, with Damon and, and Philip that it's unlikely that this will be the, the last time we have these kinds of conversations. We keep coming back to the same place over and over again. And I think what history has certainly taught us is that ultimately American policing uh, was based very much on, on a racist uh, system. I, you know, I write about the fact that we can't understand uh, contemporary two, development. The boyfriend was recalling you know, the building letter, but from the call history, safe patrols, probably we day like Jim Adam policies we look at Black codes, and the list goes on and on. But I mentioned that because if you understand the history, then you understand that what we're seeing today is simply a, a legacy uh, of slavery. And I'm not optimistic that this will be the last time we're having this conversation. Mm. Philippe, you are based in South Minneapolis. You're a counselor there. What is it like to be there right now? Yes. Yeah, so just for clarification, I actually represent North Minneapolis, which is actually the historically black uh, community in Minneapolis, which we have a very